we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting. The Maledictio. This way. Signora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, L'amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction! Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. It must have captured the whole robbery. If I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. 
One minute, I'd been planning dinner with Nico. The next, I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. He definitely looked better. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Poor guy. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough, until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I definitely needed to check out that office. It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. We'd met before. It hadn't ended well. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. Excuse me. Monsieur. There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the cafe, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. What do you know about Le Lizard Bleu? It's bourgeois. Vacuous and overpriced. Just like it's curator Lane. He's always in here, you know. Talking art to his latest flusier. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill. And tell him to pay up next time. I wondered whether Lane was in a hurry to get somewhere, or just trying to skip paying his bill. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come, I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not.
In the pocket was a pair of nail clippers. They were monogrammed with the letters H-L. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? What was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? Oh, Henri, is he dead? Prayed so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course. The man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. Did you know the gallery owner? Of course. We worked together on the exhibition. Oh, really? Henri provided the space. I was the creative powerhouse. How long had you known him? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. If Lane was involved with the gallery, then he had to know the code to that door. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. 
Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri, no motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. Take a look at this. Walt Albert, it's your bill from the cafe next door. So, you sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. <sighs> All right. You have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What's that number again? Six, four, two, no. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. <laughs> I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mou. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mou, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard, an unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nave. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, Madame. It is no longer just a theft, it is a murder. Mon dieu! That poor man! I witnessed the crime! I've got to get back in there! I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief! I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, Madame Gola. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nave will be delighted! You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So, I cannot go in without Inspector Nave's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nave's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. No, he's a... Never mind. Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius, a man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the Inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. I really need to get into the gallery and speak to Inspector Nave. Tut tut, he is not to be disturbed. He is applying his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog tired and want to go home. This was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? 
I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is, it was very... unfortunate. I am on duty, and I need to focus. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You've been so helpful. Madame. Bonjour, Monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, madame. Try me. Because I look at you, and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> and the men with their grooming products, and their shiny shoes, and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for lattes. Macchiatos. Frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality, fraternity. Vive la revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitas, The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, are none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes, to the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was La Liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Perhaps you will... Walk that road with me? Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. Did you see anything happen at the gallery earlier? I saw you running after a pizza delivery guy. Somebody said he killed someone. That's true. He stole a painting and shot the gallery owner. Uh, how close we are to death. And yet how far from ever comprehending it. 
Mm, well, right now I need to get back inside and figure out what happened. I applaud you, madame. To seek the truth is a worthy ambition. As a journalist, that is my duty. How about some coffee? For you, madame, of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment. Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. Could you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Sergeant Mou, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic. Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little... problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I'm tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident, it involved you, some coffee, and your... little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm only a sergeant. Well, since you seem quite understanding, I shall elaborate. Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the president himself. Uh, one day, en vacances, he went for a private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee-pee. When I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the president's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant, just after the President's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the President himself. Well, the President's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. Yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious republic, your career. Hmm. How you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mu, drink! She is? She is. Drink? Or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose... it is... drink? Bravo, Sergeant! Oh dear! Oh dear! Excuse me, madame. I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, Sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. 
Well, you won't fool me so easily, madame. I shall question you later. Nico, am I glad to see you. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Henri is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. It looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery? And no ordinary painting. The priest claims that La Maledizio is evil. I need to get into the office and see what the CCTV has to offer. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do. Inspector Nave, do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now. Did you see the alarm was sabotaged? I have interrogated the crime scene, madame. I am fully aware of the disabled security. I prefer biological evidence to the merely circumstantial. Body parts, blood, important things. Don't you think the disabled alarm is highly suspicious, though? The forensic team will be along shortly. Voice your concerns to them. Do not bother me with this circumstantial flifflaff. Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, Madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector Nave seemed to appreciate involved gore. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. No way was I going to clean that up with my bare hands. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card, hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. How about that for a distraction? I wondered whether it would be enough. The tomato sauce looked as close to blood as it was ever going to. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it is time to employ... The machine. Okay, Georges. That should distract him for a while. Nice work, Nico. I'll let you know what I find in the office. I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick, because it wouldn't take him long. Sorry, Mr. Rickenbacker. I, I've been busy. Yeah, I damn well hope so. I'm watching the news. Oh, uh, anything interesting? Yeah, someone stole a painting. Oh, really? 
And it was one you insured. What's going on? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the guy was armed, sir. So? You think I should have thrown myself in front of the thief? Wrestled him to the ground? Got myself shot? Sure would have made me feel better. Anyway, find that painting, or give me a good reason not to pay out. Please tell me that you have some leads. I'm working on it. Henri's notice board was covered with all kinds of junk. The statue was jaunty. Up close and personal, I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. Very interesting. I wasn't going to open the safe without the key. I was fairly sure that even Henri wouldn't be silly enough to keep it hidden in the office. The sofa had clearly taken some punishment over the years. A pair of evil eyes stared from a partially covered poster. The calendar looked like a child's school project. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. The poster advertised a 1975 Stockholm Music Festival, headlined by a group called the Harry Lobsters. Carrying an ink pot around inside my pocket would have been stupid. The ink would have stained my hands for days. It was the paper that Nico wrote for. Nico lived for the day her story would be on the front cover. I didn't want to carry the tape around. I had a feeling I wasn't going to need it. I didn't feel the need to take Henri's eraser. The lighter was corroded and grimy. It would probably never work again. I decided to leave it. The pen could have been useful. Then again, it might have leaked all over my pocket. I didn't need a business card. I didn't like the idea of a pocket full of sharp pins. There was nothing else in the drawer. The folder looked interesting. This was very definitely tampering with evidence. It was a completion of work notice from a company called Vera Security. They weren't the guys we'd recommended. Henri had gone behind our backs to choose a different security outfit. I'd never heard of Vera Security, but there was an address and phone number on the form. In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores. The address indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. I decided to put the letter back. Henri's financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. A pair of evil eyes stared. The CCTV system was ancient. It took individual shots and recorded them to tape. It looked like I needed to enter a passcode to view the recording. Bingo. I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledixio. He couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. Was Henri studying that picture, or did he look worried? There was definitely more to this robbery than I first thought. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. 
Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledicio just before the robbery. Funny, the painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time, just odd. It seemed that whenever Nico stepped back into my life, so did trouble. There I was looking at the exhibition. A good view of La Maledicio. I could kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain presence about it. The killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. The CCTV had caught the killer in the act of lifting La Maledicio from the wall. He... The moment it all went horribly wrong. There was some writing on the front of his helmet, but I couldn't quite make it out. Why hadn't Henri backed down when the thief pulled the gun? If that was me, I'd have done whatever the guy wanted. The killer making his getaway. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. The alarm should have sounded when the killer took the painting, but it, I, or perhaps even Vera Security, who'd installed the system. The painting was gone. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. Hopefully I didn't look too suspicious. That was me fiddling with the alarm. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. Hmm, not my best angle. That was the last shot. I'd probably learned everything I could from the CCTV. Monsieur, sir, you have snuck in here, and now you are tampering with my evidence. I wasn't tampering with anything. I was just looking for clues. That is my job, Monsieur... Monsieur... Stobart. George Stobart. Paris Mutual. We insured the exhibition. Oh, really? So, you have plenty to gain from the robbery. Well, uh, no. We have plenty to lose from the robbery. Don't patronize me, Monsieur. Only a fool wouldn't know how insurance works. Yeah, no flies on you, Inspector. Exactly. I have to get up very early in the morning, which means I can be sure to catch the worm. So I see. May I remind you, Monsieur, that a serious crime has been committed. I am going to have to ask you to return to the gallery. Of course, but I do need to ask you a few questions. D'accord. But remember, anything you say can be used against you, Monsieur Stobart. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. Do you know anything about a company called Vera Security? No, I have never heard of them. Now, I must get on with my investigation. It's very likely that the security camera holds a clue to the killer's identity. Monsieur, I am a professional. And you are an amateur. So, leave the investigating to me, eh, pal? Monsieur, you are American, no? Yeah, California born and bred. Of course. I think perhaps you are wanting to be like that Starsky and Butch, monsieur. No? Rolling around on top of fast cars with beautiful ladies, firing your gun... Interesting idea, Inspector, but not really my style. Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, Monsieur. You are my prime suspect. You may go now, but I will need to speak with you again. I had some valuable leads. But before following up on him, I had important business to attend to. Hey, Nico, you want to grab a quick cup of coffee? Sure.
I am pleased to announce that I have finished my preliminary investigation. This is now an official crime scene, and you must all go. I shall be questioning all of you again in the coming days. Nobody is to leave the country, particularly you, Monsieur Stobart. Monsieur Lane will stay behind to help secure the premises. Mo? Yes, Inspector. Let them out. Right away, sir. Two coffees, please. Nice work in there, Nico. Whatever you did, it worked. I just made a tiny distraction, and Nave bought it. I think Nave would buy anything if it had blood on it. You know, this whole setup, the theft, the murder, it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Like I said, I think it was an inside job. Go on. Someone disabled the alarm, but on just one painting. Let me guess. La Maledicio. Exactly. And I aim to find out who did it. The CCTV picked up an image of the thief. His helmet had the words Waterloo Motors written across it. Interesting. I think I got a couple of good shots of him, too. But I need to take a better look at them at home. Great. Let me know what you find. Well, the priest thinks La Maledicio is evil. Charles, she's just crazy. Yeah. You're probably right, but there's something strange going on. I found the address of the security company Henri employed. It was not the one that I recommended. Good luck with your investigations. Well, I guess I should go. This story won't write itself. And Georges? Yeah? It's good to see you again. Great to see you too, Nico. I watched her walk away. The sound of traffic, the sun shining, a crime to solve, and Nico back in my life. The address led me to a dead end alley at the end of a deadbeat mall. No wonder I'd never heard of Vera Security. What's wrong? There's a monster. What? Where? On the floor. Get rid of it. Oh, the cockroach. Yes, the cockroach. Help! Come here, little fella. There were crumbs on the floor. No wonder the cockroach was sticking around. I was never going to catch it with my bare hands. Romanovs, a Russian brand cigarette. The pack was empty. As a child, I'd always been told not to play with matches, but I never could resist. The ashtray was full of cigarette butts. The filters were gold-colored. Very exotic. I tipped out the matches. I set down my matchbox. Cockroaches like hiding in dark places. Not a bad idea when you think about it. Hmm. Cockroach wasn't going for it. 
I needed some bait. Hello, I'm George Stobart. Call me Bassam. And do please forgive me, but I'm in no mood to talk. I have a resounding headache. Bad migraine, eh? The worst. The buzzing and flashing from the old sign is killing me. I thought the neon sign had potential until it broke. Is it your sign? No, the previous owners used to be a restaurant. But this is horrible. Adversely affecting my footfall and giving me a splitting headache. Could you help me with a vermin problem, please? Please, Mr. Stobart, I really can't deal with other people's problems right now. You want me to try fixing that sign for you? Do you know what you're doing? I'm very good at fixing things. Then please do. I'm no good at electricals. Marketing analysis and predicting trends is more my thing. I took a good look at the sign. The wiring was exposed and the cover broken. No wonder it was flashing. I pulled the wire off. Well, that was one way to stop the letters flashing. Now only half the sign was illuminated. The buzzing and flashing has stopped. And I am very grateful. But the sign still looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? When you're building a brand from the ground up, name is everything. I need a name that makes my customers long for adventure and treasures from faraway places. I could take a look at your sign, come up with something. You're like a genie from a magic lamp. Tell me about your business idea. This stall is going to put me through college while giving me field experience. But the nonsense sign is working against me. It should spell a name for my shop. I need something original, yet familiar, bright and in your face, yet subtle and symbolic. Seemed the letters could be moved around. Shame it didn't have the right letters to spell the sound. I'd have to think of something else. Hey, Bissam, how about this? I know it's not your name, but... Aladdin! Very cool! <laughs> That's a terrific name for my store. Hits every one of my USPs. Glad you like it. You're a genius, George. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Aha, Mr. Stobart. What can I do for you? Do you happen to know a good way to catch a cockroach? To be honest, George, I'm better at questions on balancing budgets within a liberal economic framework. But as a layman, perhaps I could suggest you trap it? And please, whatever you do, don't squish it. Why is that? The entire family will catch the scent and arrive for the funeral. Ooh, we don't want that. You need to find a container of some sort. Then I think add this. 
Rich tea. Oh, what's that, a cookie? The perfect cockroach biscuit. Dry, dull, unsatisfying, and yet curiously Moorish. I'll give it a try. Glad to help. Do you know anything about Vera security over there? Not really. I haven't been here long, but neither have they by the looks of it. Why do you say that? Rush setup, new sign, low investment, and no customers except for you. I really like your new sign. It's magnificent. I owe you one. What do you think? I'm over the moon, George. Thanks to you, I can now sell my retro cavalcade of musical cards, brushes, souvenirs. And you know what they say, happy sellers make happy shoppers. So what are you selling? Ah, I'm glad you asked. I sell all those things you can't get anywhere else in Paris. Like? English biscuits, Turkish delight, French cassettes, Brazilian Betamax videos. <laughs> Thank you for the cookie. You're very welcome. I added some bait to the matchbox. Even I was finding it hard to resist that little trap. Gotcha! You are a gentleman and no mistake. I hate cockroaches. Always ready to help a damsel in distress. I bet you are. Can I help you? Yes, please. Do you know if there's anyone in the office I can talk business with? Yes, me, chérie. I'm Annette, the manager. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... The gloves. I just thought... Ah, easy mistake to make. If you haven't been reconstructed, that is. Oh, but I have been reconstructed. A number of times. From the ground up. Yes? There's been a theft at Le Lizard Bleu. A painting's been stolen. Shame. Still, I'm sure you'll get over it. I believe your company set up the security. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Didn't. Did. I've got all day. But I didn't. It says here that Vera was hired to do the security at the gallery. Didn't do a very good job, did you? Where did you get that? At the gallery. That job was signed off. You can't say we were to blame. I was getting a bad feeling. The place looked like a front, and the only person there wasn't helping. Maybe the office itself could give me more information. Are you done? Only I want to listen to this next race. Thanks. Do you mind? I'm listening to the race. Annette was watching me like a hawk. Hello, Vera Security. We make you secure. I wanted to see what secrets the book might contain. There was a photo. Of course, I grabbed it. Yes. Recognize this? Hey, that's my photo. That's you with Lane, I believe. So, what if it is? What is he to you? 
Oh, my Hector, that's what he is. My little Hector. Yeah, I thought you said you had nothing to do with the gallery. Look, here's how it is. I've only been there a few weeks. I had nothing to do with that gallery job. I just delivered the paperwork. So, who was the manager before you? I don't know. She just, one day, didn't come in for work. I shouldn't be talking to you. The boss told me to keep my mouth shut. The boss. Have you got his number or address? No, I've forgotten it. I mean, I never knew it. Annette, a serious crime has been committed. You're in a lot of trouble. I had nothing to do with it. Look, I need this job. I need the money. Anyway, it's only a silly old painting. No one got hurt. The gallery owner was shot. Badly? Yeah, he's pretty dead. Oh. This is a murder investigation. Now, who's your boss? I don't know. Honest, he faxes me if he wants anything. He? Who is he? I've never seen him, never met him. Hmm. Don't make trouble for poor Annette. Thanks. I was pretty sure Annette had told me all she was going to. She sounded scared. Time to put the thumb screws on Lane, and I knew just how. Time to confront Lane. I wondered if the widow had anything to do with the gallery at all. The door was locked. Hello? This is George Stobart. May I come up? Stobart? What are you doing here? Good grief. Is that you, Mr. Lane? Actually, I wanted to talk to you. Mr. Lane, does the name Annette mean anything to you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you don't let me in, I'll tell the police about your interesting connection to the security company. Uh, all right, then. Come up, but make it brief. I need to talk to Madame Dubois. I'm sure it can wait. Dear Lord George, you have a worse timing. Is this a bad time to accuse you of lying? What do you want? I've just come from Vera's security. So? Tell me about Annette. Who? From Vera Security. I don't know any Annette. What do you know about the owner of Vera Security? I've never had the pleasure. I'm surprised you let your conquests keep souvenirs. Oh. Where did you get that? Annette lent it to me. Quit waving it around, for God's sake. Come on, Lane. Tell me about Annette. All right, all right. I had a fling with her, okay? Now keep your voice down, please. And you two fixed the security for the robbery? No, nothing like that. Anyway, the, the fling was a mistake. She turned out to be rather needy. I believe you. You're not a criminal. Just a lecherous old man. Less of the old, if you don't mind. As it happens, I make a lot of women happy. Especially when you leave them. Can you tell me anything about the owner of Vera? Annette told me he's some angry-looking Russian chap. Okay, Lane. Take off. You can't tell me what to do. You want me to show Bijou this picture? All right, all right, I'm going. 
You haven't heard the last of me, Stobart. Promise? And give me that photo. If Lane was telling the truth, that meant that Annette was lying. She said she'd never met the owner and was very keen to get rid of me. I wondered if she was hiding something interesting in that back office. Are you going to introduce yourself properly? Pleased to make your acquaintance, madame. My name's George Stobart. Call me Vision. Hello, young man. Such a delight to have a new visitor. What can I do for you? I'm from the insurance company. I'm so sorry for your loss. Henri, my poor Sauvage. He died in his prime. Could I just ask you a few questions? Well, why not? A little company might just pep me up, as you Americans might say. Henri was very brave at the gallery. He tried to stop a thief and paid the ultimate price. Henri was my lion and my little pussycat. How are you coping? I'm still trying to take it in, Cherie. Can you tell me about the gallery? Was the business doing well? The gallery was Henri's baby. He never spoke to me about it. So you weren't involved? Not at all. Business is not my thing. Your record player seems to be stuck on the same song. Yes. This song gives me great comfort. It reminds me of Henri. Bijou, I think someone involved with the gallery helped the thief. It wasn't Hector Lane. He's not devious enough. But who else? I don't know. But I will get to the bottom of it, I promise you. Thank you for your help, Bijou. My pleasure, young man. To come back any time. Bijou appeared to know nothing. I still couldn't discount Lane. Annette, on the other hand, had lied about Vera's security's owner. Henri was now dressed in a cheap suit. On balance, I prefer the waistcoat. Night was falling. Annette would have left for the evening. It was time to pay a visit to Vera Security. The empty mall was lit by bright moonlight. The perfect ambiance for a little detective work. I wanted a good look at that back office. I just had to find a way in. The wire connected the power supply to the aircon. The wire connected the shutter motor to the master controller. In the drawer was a single Q-tip. 
It was my lucky day. It hadn't been used. The room was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. In the corner of the room was a pizza delivery scooter, just like the one the killer had escaped on. It was a pizza delivery scooter. Oil had dripped from the scooter onto the floor. There was a letter jammed in the shredder. I tried to free the gears, but they were jammed solid. Its service was long overdue. I smeared some oil onto the cotton bud. I smeared the gears with oil. It was time to see what was in the letter. I grabbed the paper clip. It was the letter from Henri confirming that Vera Security had the contract for the exhibition. And it also revealed who was in charge at Vera, a guy called Madofsky. At first glance, it all seemed pretty run-of-the-mill. But why was Henri thanking Madofsky for being generous? 
And why was he pleased to represent him? Maybe Madovsky was the owner we'd been looking for. It didn't add up. I had a gut feeling. There was something fishy going on. The air vent had a tiny catch on the side. The paper clip was perfect for the job. There was definitely something in there. Now, what are you gotcha? Well, would you believe it? It was a gun, and very likely the one that had been used to shoot Henri. Aha! So, what have we here? L'Américain, Monsieur Stobart. You will rue the day you crossed my path, because now you are caught in my net like a little red herring. Inspector, I'm investigating the robbery. No, monsieur. You are breaking and entering an innocent storeroom. I found the murder weapon. Found? No. Planted? Yes. Mou, arrest this man and take him to the station. I shall squeeze you, Monsieur Stobart, until your pips squeak. Thanks, Ronnie. I just wish I'd got some better shots of the killer. Are you kidding? That stuff from the hip is very dramatic. You did good, Nico. So, what's next? Get me an interview with the owner, and you've got Sunday's front page. I'm on it already. Keep me up to speed. Let me know before you write anything up, okay? Of course. Oh, gotta go. Someone at the door. Monsieur? Are you Nicole Collard? Yes, can I help you? I need to sit down. You'd better come in. Would you like a glass of wine? Yes, yeah, those stairs are a nightmare. Hmm, that's better. So, what can I do for you, monsieur? My name is Tiago Marquez. I saw your report on the robbery. I found your address. I came straight away. I needed to see you. And why is that? The stolen painting, La Malediction. It belongs to me. Ronnie had wanted me to interview the owner. And now, here he was. Or rather, he was somebody who claimed to be the owner. So this stolen painting is yours. Tell me more. La Malediction belonged to my family in Catalonia in the 30s before the Civil War. So what was it doing here in Paris? The fascists stole it in 1938. They killed my father, but not me. I escaped. I have been looking for it ever since. You have to help me find it. Tell me about yourself. I am Tiago Marquez, the rightful owner of La Malediction. What else is there to tell? You traveled all the way from Catalonia? No, since the war I've lived in France, in the southwest. And now I want the painting back. Did you lose all your family in the civil war? When they came for us in 38, I fled with my mother. But my father was not so lucky. I'm sorry. I would have stayed and fought for freedom, but I was just a boy. 
you've got my attention, but if I'm to help you, I need more to go on. I have something. This old photograph. It is of me and my family. See the painting above the fireplace? Yes, it's La Malediccio. The photograph certainly appeared to link the old man to the painting. You took the photographs at that robbery, huh? I did, yes. I need to see them. Why? Please, I must see them. All right. Here they are. This one was rejected. Georges got in the way. Typical. Who is this George? Just a friend. He insured the painting. So, he will know who is this liar who claims to own my painting. I don't think he does. He would have told me. This is the best shot I took. They used it in the paper. Yes, it is how I recognize La Maledicio, my painting. It does look like the one in your photograph. So close. But now it is lost again. He's the thief making off with the painting. What is that tattoo on his arm? Looks like a skull and crossbones. Hair compass, hmm? You will find him, and then you will find my painting. I can try, monsieur. You must, mademoiselle. Mm, this shop didn't come out too well. It's perfect. Perfect? Finally, la malediction. In all its splendor, the lines, the color, the detail, it's been so long since I've seen it. Then take it. That shot is no good to me. Really? Thank you, mademoiselle. Marquez's story was very interesting, but I needed to corroborate it. I wondered if the gallery kept ownership records. And while I didn't wholly trust you, this was the one lead that I didn't want to lose. Where are you staying? What? Nowhere. Here, perhaps. I didn't want him to stay in my apartment. There was another solution. My neighbor is out of town for a few days. You could stay there. Yeah, that would be good. Thank you. Great. Let's go. Adam said that he would leave the spare key under the map. My neighbor had left a key for me under the doormat. Which reminded me I hadn't watered his plants for a week. The key wasn't there. The gap was wide, but not wide enough for my fingers. Using the sticky chewing gum, I was able to fish out the key. This will do. Glad it's up to standard. I have to go out, monsieur. Ronnie had promised me the front page if I got an interview with the painting's owner. And he was a crazy Spaniard claiming to be just that. I needed to find out who had put the painting up for sale. Maybe there was more to find at the gallery. Lael was sitting outside the cafe. He looked dazed. Hello, Monsieur Lin. Ah, the delectable Nicole Collard, super sleuth. How may I be of service? I was hoping I'd find you here. 
always available for a lovely lady such as yourself. Henri's death, it must be so very hard for you. Yes, I shall miss him deeply. We had such a very special relationship. The loss is so hard to endure, even for a man of such inner strength as myself. What do you know about the owner of La Maladic Seal? That was Henri's business. He found the painting and did the deal with the owner. Would anybody else know anything about the owner? Not likely. He kept especially quiet about that one. But he always kept a manifest for every exhibition. I'm writing a follow-up piece on the gallery theft. Ah, so you need an inside view. Authoritative. Something like that. The police have finished in the gallery. We could chat in the office. It's much more comfortable. More intimate. I might even be able to rustle up a little bottle of champagne. Maybe later. I have some things to do first. Maybe next time, then. You mentioned the manifest. How would one get a look at that? One might start in the office. That's where Henri mm -hmm. kept most of his paperwork. About the gallery. Of course, my dear. We can go there now, if you would like. That sounds great. We can discuss my ordeal over a glass of champagne. A cozy chat with Lane was the last thing I wanted. But it was my best hope if I wanted to get a look around the office. So, what are we waiting for? After you, my dear. The place was heaving with junk. Finding what I wanted wouldn't be easy. As Lane sat down, something stuck out from beneath the cushion. It looked like a folder. Whatever it was, the police had missed it. I needed to get it. Come, join me on the couch. I'm ready for you. You will be gentle with me, won't you? Oh, I'm never gentle, Monsieur Lane. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Do call me Hector. Lane hadn't noticed the folder. With that amount of padding, who would? The only way to get hold of it was to distract him. Monsieur Lane? Hector, please. Oh, Hector. Perhaps I will join you in that glass of champagne. But of course, champagne, nature's balm in troubled times. To new friends! To love! Oh, mon dieu, that is so cold! Oops, silly me. I am so sorry. I'll have to dry this off. Don't you worry, my dear. In the folder was a list of all the paintings in the exhibition. The Maledixio had to be there. It was. And next to it was the owner's name. Mr. Medovsky. The police had obviously not spotted the folder. I put it back. I had what I needed for my story. Monsieur Lane, thanks for everything. But I think I hear my editor calling. 
Ma chérie, no need to leave so soon. It, it's only a little spillage. And I found out who claims to own La Maledexio. Some guy named Madovsky. Sounds Russian, right? Madovsky, my god. Who is he? He's new on the oligarch plot. Fresh into London from Russia with ambition and a bloody reputation. Call Art, this is way over your head. I'm gonna put a more experienced crime journalist on the story. I can't afford for you to get hurt. Relax, Ronnie. This is my story. Leave it with me. Let's discuss it over lunch tomorrow. Okay. But don't do anything more. See you tomorrow. Ronnie didn't trust me on this story, but I wasn't going to let him give it to someone else. I was going to have to move fast. Come in. Hi, Georges. Great to see you. Hope you don't mind me just dropping in. No, not at all. How are you getting on? Pretty good. I found the gun that was used in the robbery. I'm impressed. Yeah? Well, Nave wasn't. He accused me of trying to plant it, and then of being involved in Henri's death. Then he threw me into a cell. He couldn't make a stick, of course, so he had to let me go this morning. But he's convinced I'm involved. So if I put a foot wrong, he'll nail me next time. But, hey, on the bright side, have I got a story for you. Annette, the manager at Vera Security, lied about the owner of the company. When I pieced together that shredded letter, I got a name. Medovsky. Medovsky. That's the same guy who claims to own La Maledictio. What? He owns the painting and Vera Security? He has to be the one behind this whole scam. You're telling me. We have to be sure. What the? I cannot sleep on that bed. It is too soft. Josh, this is Senor Marquez. Uh, nice to meet you. Hmm. So you are this George, huh? Senor Marquez is staying in the apartment across the hall. Apparently, he's the real owner of La Maledictio. What? I thought you said Madovsky was the owner. Senor Marquez claims the painting was stolen from his family during the Spanish Civil War. Really? Do you have any proof? Senor Marquez, could you show him the photograph? That's definitely La Maledictio hanging on the wall? It belonged to my family, so it belongs to me. Who is this? My father. When they came for us in 38, I fled with my mother. But my father was not so lucky. Who's this? My mother. A good woman. A saint. How can we prove this is you as a child? The dates would tie up, Charles. If the painting really was stolen during the 1930s, then this Madovsky guy has no legitimate claim to it. But how can I be sure that you're the boy in that picture? I can prove it. Look at my father in the photograph. You see the medallion he's wearing? He gave it to me just before he died. This medallion has been in our family for hundreds of years. It's definitely the same medallion. A snake eating its own tail. And that's also on the painting. It is the Ouroboros. The what? The Ouroboros. It is a sign of my people, my family, my faith. The Gnostics. My father was a Gnostic leader. The Maledictio is sacred to the Gnostics, hence they both display the Ouroboros. A priest I met said the painting was the devil's work, a thing of evil. Ha! <laughs> he would say that. Do not believe all you hear from the church. Whatever you think, the painting is mine. 
If Marquez was the true owner of Maledicio, then Madofsky had no legal claim to it. Might be tough to prove, but if I could, we wouldn't have to pay out on the insurance. So if the painting belongs to you, how did Madofsky get it? The fascists stole it. It went to Madrid, then Berlin, then after the war to Moscow. After that, it was lost until now. We need to talk to this Madofsky, but how do we find him? Hey, Nico? Yes, Josh? What do we know about this Madofsky character? Ronnie said he was dangerous and very rich. He claims to be the owner of La Maledicio. And appears to be the boss of Vera's security who are supposed to protect it. Now that kind of figures. The best way to steal something is to get hired to look after it. But why steal a painting you already own? We need to talk to this guy. To do that, we need to find him. So let's go over what we know about the thief. Okay, well, he had a distinctive tattoo on one arm. And his helmet had Waterloo motors across it. Not a lot to go on. Why would somebody steal their own painting? Insurance scam? But then why kill Henri? I get the impression that Henri was somehow involved. I found the gun that Henri was shot with at Vera Security. If Madoski owns Vera Security, it means that he must know the killer. Well, it can't be Annette, but she has to be involved in some way. You said the thief had a tattoo. On his arm, it was a skull and crossbones with headhunters written around it. We need to track down Waterloo Motors. Have you tried the internet? I've been kind of busy. Okay, let's have a look. Waterloo Station, Battle of Waterloo, Waterloo Kebabs, Waterloo Sunset, ah, uh, here we go, Waterloo Motors. It's a garage in London. I'll send the number to your phone. Hi. How can I help you? My name is George Stobart. I'm investigating a murder that was committed here in Paris. What's that got to do with us? The guy we're looking for was wearing a helmet with Waterloo Motors on it. Oh, yeah. It's a very popular helmet. I don't suppose you know who might have bought one? Well, not unless you've got any more information, mate. The killer had a tattoo on his arm. It said, Headhunters. Oh, uh, I know that guy. Yeah, he, uh, he bought one of our helmets just the other day. Terrific. Do you know his name? Nah. He brings his boss's Merc here to have it serviced. Word to the wise, though. Oh, yeah, he don't mess about. The car's registered on Dutchy Street, isn't he? I mean, that's all I know, mate. Sorry. No, that's more than enough. You've been a great help. Thanks for your time. Bingo. Good work. That has to be the guy. And now we've got his address. How about a trip to London? I thought you'd never ask. Senor Marquez, will you be okay here? The bed is uncomfortable. But it will do. Come back quickly with the painting, eh? London cabbies. Gotta love them. This is the place. Here on the right. To afford a place like this in London, you've got to be good at something. So, we clear on how we're going to do this? Yeah. We're two insurance investigators, see? We finoodle our way inside, butter Madofsky up, and then get the dirt on him, right? Finoodle? Yeah, finoodle. 
You remember how to fend a little, don't you, Nico? George, how could I ever forget? Good, because I suspect we're gonna need major league canoodling to get this one. You got it. The bush was perfectly shaped. It was topiary in progress. Excuse me? Hello? On your bike, darling. This is a private residence. We're here to see Mr. Madovsky. So? Nice bush. Bush? This is so much more than just a bush. Oh, I am sorry. It's art, love. Or to be precise, topiary. And as everybody knows... Topiary is a transitioned form. That's right. A statement of man's dominance over nature. A metaphor for the human condition. And yet... It's not enough, is it? Not for the big questions. Life, death. Right and wrong. Tell me about it. You struggle, monsieur? Day and night. That is the human condition. Can we ever escape it? It is possible through meditation, contemplation. I see. It is our only salvation. Well, you give me food for thought, you have. Any time. Much appreciated. At a difficult time. You are welcome, monsieur. So, anyway, this is my latest piece. What do you think? It's uh, very nice. Eagle? A two-headed eagle. Result. Get in there, my son. Yes, it's a Russian Imperial Eagle for the boss. You spotted it straight off. I owe you one, lady. You have got that rare quality. Real insight. No, please. You have a rare talent. We'd like to see Mr. Madovsky. It's about the insurance on La Maledictio. The boss doesn't take callers without an appointment, but I'll see what I can do. I need a good reason to bother the boss with this. He's a busy man. I understand. But I think he'll want to speak with us. What makes what you have to say so important? La Maledexio, a painting that belongs to him, has been stolen. If he wants his insurance claim processed quickly, then he'll want to speak with us. I think he might be annoyed if he finds out you never even told him we came around, right? Okay, okay. Hang on, I'll phone him now. Yeah, Mr. Madovsky. Yeah. Yes, boss. Right, I will do. You've piqued the boss's interest. That isn't always a good thing. The gate should be open. I'll take you inside. Follow me, please. Mr. Madovsky will be right with you, madame. Well, we're in. Now what? We'll make him think we're all set to pay out on the policy. See if we can get him to talk. Welcome, welcome. Good day, monsieur. My name is Nico Collard, and this is my assistant, Georges Tabar. You are here to discuss La Maledictio, yes? Correct. I am surprised to see you. 
My agreement with the gallery specified that my ownership should be kept in the strictest confidence. It would appear that agreement has been broken. A man has been killed, monsieur. An agreement is an agreement. My apologies for disturbing you, monsieur, but I'm afraid we must ask you some questions. So be it. The loss of a painting is nothing compared to the loss of a life. Ask away. How did you come into possession of La Maledictio? I purchased it at auction. We have reason to believe that the theft was an inside job. Oh, that is terrible. The staff at the gallery were so pleasant to deal with, but such is human nature. I trust this won't delay the insurance claim. I'm sure matters will be sorted out soon. Did you know Henri, the gallery owner? Oh, purely on a professional basis. My restorer recommended his gallery to me. Did you ever meet him personally? No, no, only via email. I rarely fly. I'm carbon neutral, you know. Very conscientious, monsieur. Well, the planet won't save itself. <laughs> Do you have receipts for the painting? Of course. I have already sent them to your office. Ah, these things take time to process. What is there to process? I own the painting, someone stole it, and your company provided me with insurance. I am the victim here. A state you share with the deceased, monsieur. What connection do you have to Vera Security? I've never heard of it. There is strong evidence that ties you to Vera Security. Oh, you are beginning to sound like a policeman, madame. We are merely doing our jobs, monsieur. We must leave no stone unturned. I would leave this particular stone unturned, if I were you. I'd rattled him, but I didn't want to push too hard. Of course. We will check our information again. I would do that. Your restorer, how does he fit into all this? Hobbs. Well, he did a little cleaning work on La Maledictio, that's all. I think that's enough for now. When do you expect the claim to be paid out? It will not be long, monsieur. When exactly? Surely you can give me a date. Monsieur Medovsky, I'm sure you... Please excuse the interruption, sir. What is it, Shears? Hobbs is here. Tell him I'm busy. He mentioned the uh, portfolio, sir. For pity's sake, can he not just follow simple instructions? Uh, please excuse me for a moment. The gardener's called Shears? Yeah, probably not what his mother christened him. What a creep. Very clever creep at that. We got nothing on him, and he knows it. He just brushed off the Vera connection. We need something else to get under his skin. I could use Marquez's leverage. Yeah, it's just one man's word against another. So what else can we do? Let's take a look around. Maybe there's something here we can use against him. Good idea, Georges. You search, I'll keep watch at the window. Madovsky had left the cabinet open. On the shelf inside was a business card and a scribbled note. I picked up the business card. It read, Wilfred Hobbs, Fine Art Restoration. I made a note of the address. Then I put the card back where I'd found it. No point arousing Madovsky's suspicions. See a penny, pick it up. Then all day you'll have good luck. Hmm. A Russian imperial egg. It looked rather plain. It was a thank-you note from a British politician. Huh. 
Madofsky certainly had some dubious friends. Everything was in Cyrillic, except for a number, 1869. I suspected the medals weren't from the Moscow Debating Society. The note read, L. Serp drawings for you to check. W.H. Now we're cooking with gas. I wondered if the painting could be in the portfolio that Madovsky had taken. It seems our Madovsky has friends in low places. It's like my boss said, the guy wants to be a player. Madovsky in Libya. Happy days. What kind of guy hangs a picture of himself and Colonel Gaddafi on the wall? The kind who will commit murder in order to steer their own painting. It was a Russian privatization voucher. I wondered why Madovsky displayed it so proudly. It was a beautifully inlaid cigarette box. The catch had snapped. By extraordinary good fortune, the coin I'd picked up was the perfect shape to flip open the broken catch. Fancy that. Romanovs. The same brand of cigarettes that were in the ashtray in Vera's security. Keys are always useful. Can you hear what they're saying? Yes. You should not have turned up here, Mr. Hobbs. I made it clear I would deliver the package later today. I wanted to make sure it got to me all right. I've got a lot of work to do on it. This is most inconvenient. Madovsky's arguing with his visitor, Hobbs, about the portfolio. That portfolio is important, I'm sure of it. I should have guessed. Keyboard was Cyrillic. I tried to remember how that row of keys read on a U.S. keyboard. Medovsky had an extensive collection of management books. The Seven Secrets of Leadership, 2009. The Business Bonaparte, 1983. Office Eagle or Management Mouse, 1998. It was locked. The study door's open now. Hear anything else interesting? Hang on. Listen, Hobbs, just take the portfolio and do your work. You are nervous, and I don't like that. Understood. I have got a few questions, though. I do not like questions, either. Hurry up. I noticed a couple of people arriving. Who were they? They looked like coppers. They were from the insurance company. Has the... Hobbs is going to head off with the portfolio. Whatever's in there is important. We need to stay with it. I got Hobbs' address from his card. When we're done here, we should check it out. Okay, Josh, but hurry! Madovsky will be back soon. I'm gonna check out the study. Okay. Wow, there must be millions of dollars worth of art on these walls. The drawer was open. My heart skipped a beat. But inside, I saw only a candy bar wrapper. The desk was magnificent. Those two little holes were just waiting for me to put my fingers in. I resisted the urge. Filthy habit. 
The chair was fancy and probably more expensive than it looked. A secret drawer popped open. I knew that publication date would be significant. At last, I was going to discover Madofsky's secrets. It certainly wasn't Madofsky's sock drawer. Hey, Nico, come see this. I think we've struck gold. Hang on, I'm coming. Look, a letter from a guy called Gainin. His company, Wolfram, want to purchase La Maledizio. They're offering way over the asking price. Anything connecting Madovsky to Vera? Well, let's see. Here we go. A lease for Vera's security. Aha! Then we have the proof we need. Hang on, what's this? Expenses for a Mr. Shears. Waterloo Motors, one helmet. These are from Paris. Madame La Trex. <clears throat> Hotel Britannique, pizza. Nico, pizza. I think your friend Shears might just be Henri's killer. Charles, what have we got ourselves into? I, I just heard the front door close. Madovsky's coming. Put everything back in order, quick. Right. He'll never suspect we just ransacked his house for evidence. Jules, the coin! Damn, no time. Look cool, Nico. I'll handle this. I apologize for the lengthy wait. As you can imagine, my time is at a premium. That's fine, Mr. Madovsky. I think we're almost finished anyway. And payment? Very soon, monsieur. Very soon. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Nice collection of medals you have there, Mr. Madovsky. I earned them serving my country. Anywhere interesting? Chechnya. Ever been there? Uh, no, can't say I've had the pleasure. Is... Is that a first edition of War and Peace? Of course. Printed in 1869. A great year for my country's literature. And Tolstoy is the master. Is that a picture of you with Colonel Gaddafi? A deeply wonderful man. He was a great fan of the Impressionists. Well, he certainly left quite an impression on Libya. So, what brought you into the art business, Mr. Madovsky? Oh, an eye for great artists, an appreciation of fine culture, and a love of <laughs> what you Americans call the greenback. You must be upset at the theft of La Maledizio. Yes, and disappointed that someone would kill for such a minor piece. So this Hobbes guy... Good friend of yours, is he? No, we simply have a business arrangement. We've been through this already. Now please, if you're quite finished, I'm a busy man. Thank you for your time, Monsieur Madovsky. We'll be in touch soon. Well, no prizes for guessing where we go now. Hobbs' place, right? Got it in one. Madovsky's pretty shady, don't you think? He bought our act, though. You make a pretty good insurance man, Georges. Yeah, who'd have thought it? By the time he realizes we're not assessing his claim, we'll have cracked the case and be toasting our success. Here's hoping. Looks like rain. Come on, let's get that cab. Taxi! I think we just stepped off the London tourist trail. I guess this Hobbes character doesn't like visitors. Not the kind of place you'd expect to find a restorer of old masters. 
Unless you didn't want to attract attention. He's attracted ours. Let's see what Mr. Hobbs knows about La Maledixio. And let's try and get a look inside that portfolio. I wouldn't have been able to break the chain. Or the padlock. The door was locked. Looking through the window, I could see that there was nothing in the van. Hobbs must have taken the portfolio inside. Piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious-looking old clothes. George Stobart. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I trust you have obeyed my instructions not to leave Paris. Of course, Inspector. Good. You clearly know which side your cookie is buttered. Now, I require your presence tomorrow at the murder scene for a reconstruction. I see. Twelve o'clock sharp, Monsieur. Or, as you would say, high noon. Uh, sure. Any failure to comply, and I shall have you extraordinarily rendered. Have a nice day now. And you. That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. The large dumpster was full of garbage. Climbing drain pipes was something I preferred to avoid, unless I had a great reason to do so. It was Hobbs's mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of male snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs's temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. Slasha. I popped open the van's hood. Not a sound. The horn wasn't working. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was clear why the horn hadn't made a noise. Neither horn pipe was connected to either the battery or the cab. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it.
I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. The engine bay was a mess. There was already a wire connected to that terminal. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. I snipped the wire in half. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now what are you doing in my yard? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Uh, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid, because I need you with your kit up. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. Hi, what do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to take a look at some of your pictures. You're very good. I know, and that portfolio is private. I'm not paying you to go up around my studio. Get your blooming clothes off. Sorry. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. Hey! Leave that dial alone. The heating gobbles up all the power and the circuits can't take it. Sorry. I turned the thermostat down again. Wow, an old Boffson Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. Hobbs seemed to have a thing for 70s psychedelic jams. I turned the volume up a few notches. Hey, stop meddling with that. The power's ropey enough as it is. 
Blowing the power would certainly have distracted Hobbs, but the elevator alone wasn't going to trip the whole system. My, my, it is George Stobart. Lady Piermont. Oh, my, you're naked, of course. As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself on Belotas. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the night music of began. Trapped, smothered. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life in every way. How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? How'd I do? Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do. Hey! I've told you, don't mess with that thermostat. Sorry, but Lady Piermont is cold. I thought... Look, pal, I know it's brass monkeys in here, but the wiring in this building is ancient, and the fuse box won't take it. Her Majesty will just have to get used to chapel hat pegs. Lady Piermont, Mr. Hobbs won't let me turn up the heater. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, crows. If you do not adjust the heating, I shall refuse to cooperate. Let it be on. It's the circuits. They won't take the strain. You know what all buildings are like. In which case, I see no reason for this session to continue. Whoa, Lady Piermont, let's not be too hasty. I'm sure I can accommodate your needs. Good. Perhaps you can start by letting George here turn up the heating. Oh, oh go ahead then, but be careful. The power in here is... Uh... I turned the thermostat up as far as it would go. I wondered if the suspicious wiring could be used to my advantage. A word if I may, Lady Grimmott. For you, George, I'm all ears. How can I help? How did you come to be working with Mr. Hobbs? Wheresoever a Bohemian needs a helping hand, George, mine is always at the ready. And what better way to help than to expose one's flesh to the sensuous brushstrokes of such a talent? Do you know anything about a stolen painting called La Maledizia? Oh. Oh, is this another of your adventures, George? <laughs> How delicious. My heart's a tremor, George. Do you think Wilf is mixed up with this? Maybe, but I need you to act normally until we're sure. Mum's the word, Georgie.
I am the very soul of discretion, as you know. You see that portfolio by Hobbs' table? We need to take a peek inside. Be still, my beating heart. Just give me the nod and I'm putty in your hands. So what have you been up to since our last encounter, Lady Piermont? Charity work, dear boy. Oh, any particular kind? Young men, George. So many have lost their way. I try to guide them best I can. Lady Piermont, we need your help. How thrilling! What do you need? Subterfuge? Pleasure domain? Um, actually, I just need you to step on that lift behind you. Oh, but of course. Is this good, George, darling? Perfect. Now, just stay right there. Now was my chance. It was one of Hobbes' sketches. More of Hobbes' sketches. The model looked familiar. Impressionist sketches. Well, it wasn't La Maledicio. But it did appear to be a study for an element of the painting, the Ouroboros. There was something different about the image in the center. I figured the sketch might come in handy, so I took it. What the heck are you doing with those? They're private papers. Huh? Well, that was fun. Just like when you were a private dick, George. So, you're not models? No, Mr. Hobbs. Well, you can't be a copper. You're not stupid enough. So what the blazes are you doing in my studio? We're investigating the theft of a painting, La Melodexio, by the Spanish artist El Serp. One of these sketches is a study of that painting. Well, sure. Well, what's that got to do with that? I'm a restorer, and I restored it. I've got nothing to do with what happened after that painting left this studio. How was I to know it was going to get Henri killed? Hang on a second. How do you know Henri's dead? Look, he and I went back a long way. The Lézard Bleu was on the rope, so I got the painting into his exhibition. Nothing like this was supposed to happen. We're not accusing you of anything, Mr. Hobbs. We just want to get to the bottom of this. I get that, and I'll help you however I can. But this mess is way above my pay grade. How come you needed to make so many sketches of the painting to restore it? Restoration's not about throwing a lot of paint around. It, it takes research. The surf is a complicated painting. A lot of subtext. A lot of symbols. Why would anyone want to steal La Maledizio? It's not exactly a famous painting. True, but there is something special about it that's hard to describe. There's conviction in every brushstroke. Whoever El Serp was, he had a tale to tell. The symbolism is deeply religious. Tell me about the symbols in La Maledizio. Very Christian, deeply religious, but not exactly orthodox. The sort of thing that would upset a priest? There was one at the gallery telling everyone how evil it was. As I said, it's not exactly orthodox, and the church can be very touchy about orthodoxy. Especially now they can't just burn anyone they disagree with. We have reason to believe that Madovsky is mixed up in a theft of La Maledicio. Eh? <laughs> what would he gain from stealing his own painting? We have strong evidence that Madovsky is not the real owner. He'll have a hard time proving that. 
Medovsky has a full set of provenances for the painting. It traces its legitimate ownership all the way back to the painter. Why didn't Medovsky mention it? Because they're not with him. Henri's got them, or had them. And Henri is dead. So ask his partner. Lane? Lane, yeah, Lane. Look, pal, you're wasting your time looking for conspiracies here. And you're wasting my time if you're not actually going to get naked. Go get the providence from Lane, and everything will turn out hunky-dory. But it also puts Marquez's story into question. Not my problem, darling. Now both of you, get lost. I've got a painting to finish. And we have a critic to interrogate. Someone's lying, but who? Is it the gangster or the old Spaniard? The painter or the art critic? I need to head back for Nave's reconstruction. What about the evidence from Medovsky's house? Will you give it to Nave? I think I should. And I can put the squeeze on Lane. Ask him about the provenance. Good. I've got lunch with Ronnie tomorrow. This story is hurting up, and I want to make sure he keeps me on it. Taxi! Here I was again at the crime scene. Inside the gallery, I could see lots of activity. Now they preparing for the reconstruction, no doubt. Nico and I had a good idea who the killer was. Now all we had to do was persuade Nave. Sir, I already tried starting it up. I, I think it's broken. Nonsense, Moo. This machine has the power of ten investigators. But investigators never fail to start up, sir. Your pessimism is duly noted, Moo. But have faith. This machine will analyze the scene, compute the data, and deduce everything for us. The location of the second shooter will be a mystery no more. <clears throat> One moment. A marvel indeed, sir. Though, at the moment, it is kaput. Your pessimism has obviously infected the circuitry, Moo. Let me think for a moment. If I could just... Shh! Eh bien, Moo, now try realigning the laser matrix. Sir, I have no idea what that is. Move over, Moo. Now, let me see. Oscillating reverberator. Check. Refraction spectrometer. Check. Now, what can I do? Ah, Monsieur Stobacht, it's only you. Glad you could finally make it. Inspector. I've got some good news and some bad news. Oh, yes? I shall be the judge of that. I think I know who the killer is. Really? Yep, he's a gardener called Shears living in London. Fascinating. And the good news? We don't need to do your reconstruction. You joke with me, Monsieur Stabat. It's not a joke. This guy Shears was working for a Russian ex-mobster. It's all part of a highly complex fraud. Gardeners. KGB. Fraud. You have fantasist, monsieur. And I have no time for fantasy. Reality is my suitcase, as you Americans say. Now, stand over there and keep out of trouble until the others arrive. Well, who are we waiting for? Mademoiselle Collard and Father Simeon. Please, I am very busy. Ah, Mu, a clever choice. But no cigar for you. Try the red. Mon Dieu! Lane. Stobart. 
What's the deal with that device over there? It's a farce. They've been trying to get it working for hours. Looks like something out of a 50s sci-fi movie. It probably is. What do you think of Nave? The man is a buffoon. I have better things to do than wait for these idiots to get their forensic whatnot to work. The only silver lining is that Nave seems more annoyed than I am. What do you think of Moo? Who? The policeman with Nave. I assume he's another idiot. Why is that? I believe one can tell a man by the company he keeps. I'll bear that in mind, Mr. Lane. I gather you're the man to ask about the provenance for the painting. For La Maledixio? Well, you have been busy, haven't you, Stobart? I'd like to see it. So speak to Bijou. She took care of the business side of the gallery. The provenance is in the office safe. She has the key. Lane was a pushover when you had him cornered. Though it looked like Bijou hadn't been completely honest with me after all. I needed to pay her another visit. Okay, thanks. Yes, yes. Sir, I think we are ready to fire her up. Yes, Moo. I was just about to say the same thing. Do it. Moo, what have you done? Pardon me, sir, but I believe it was you who said... This is no time for blame. You have broken the machine. Mon Dieu. Stubbard. Monsieur Stobart, you will not leave until this is over. Understood? But I just need to... This is a reconstruction. You will remain here until I have concluded my investigations. Do I make myself clear? Okay, okay, clear. I considered making a run for it, but forcing Moo to chase me would have been cruel. And it would have been silly to risk my investigation. Better to play along with Nave and get the reconstruction over as quickly as possible. Inspector Nave. What seems to be the problem? Monsieur Stobart, if Paris' finest cannot get this very expensive and very complex machine to work, then I doubt if an insurance salesman can... I'm an insurance assessor, actually. Oh, I see. Well, la-di-da to you, monsieur. Oh, yeah? Well, la-di-da to you back. Hm, whatever. You are neither qualified nor clever enough to operate such an instrument. Like us. What was that, Moo? I said, uh, unlike us, sir. Have you been a detective long? Long enough, monsieur. You've solved a lot of crimes, I guess. More than you have had hot dinners. Well, I've had a lot of hot dinners, Inspector. Oh, yes? How many? What? Precisely how many hot dinners have you had, monsieur? I don't know. Uh, thousands? You prove my point for me, monsieur. Precision and accuracy are everything. You truly are a unique and amazing man, Inspector Nave. Well, I'm glad you are impressed. I was sure I could get the machine to work if I could just get Nave out of the way. Inspector Nave. I know this sounds obvious, but are you sure it's plugged in? 
Lucius Stoddard. Do you really think I would be so stupid as to not check the fundamentals? We all make mistakes. What a ridiculous generalization, monsieur. Look, I can see from here it's... Ah. Do you need assistance, sir? Very funny, more. One moment. That got rid of him. Now is my chance. I was going to have to figure that out quickly. Time to get the show on the road. See, Mu? I knew I would get it working. I'm not sure that you... Precisely. You knew my superior intellect would win through in the end. Yes, sir. Sir, I beg your pardon, but I think there is a teeny snag. Go. Go on. We have no victim. Good God, Mu. Are you suggesting I kill someone for the sake of this reenactment? No, sir. Just saying we need a body, sir. Ah, yes. I see. You'll make a detective yet, Mu. I, of course, foresaw this. And I nominate... You. Me? Well, I'm not dead. Have you ever acted, Monsieur Stobart? Well, I <laughs> don't like to blow my own trumpet, but I went down a storm playing the lead in Cat on a Felt-Tip Roof last summer. Hmm. You played the cat? Uh, no. So, not the lead. Half-truths again, monsieur. Nevertheless, here is your chance to play a real lead role. But he looks nothing like the victim, sir. Oh. Damn it, Moo. Must you find problems all the time? Let me think of a way to make this work. Relying on Nave's problem-solving skills could mean a long, long wait. I had to find something to make me more like Henri. I'll have a look around. Maybe I'll find something. Yes, you do that. Very similitude is the key, Stobart. Ah, you have arrived at last. Please, make yourselves comfortable. We are just making some last-minute adjustments. Father Simeon, Nico. Hi, Josh. Welcome to the asylum. Let me guess. Nave is overjoyed we've solved the case and he's putting us up for an award. Mm, not quite. I told him about Shears and Madofsky. He says it's fantasy. But that's crazy! Tell me about it. So what do we do now? Carry on anyway, and nail Madofsky. What about Nave? Ignore him. And this charade? The reconstruction? Well, sooner it starts, sooner it's over. Josh! What on earth is that machine? It's Nave's baby. Supposedly, it's going to analyze the crime scene and tell us what happened. But we already know what happened. Sure we do. But Nave doesn't. Quiet! Please! How can I concentrate with all these rackets going on? Lane was right. Nave was an idiot. The best place to find Henri's things was in his office. On the head of the statue was a pair of Henri's glasses. Maybe, just maybe, the glasses would make me look like Henri.
I've found Henri's glasses. Stole or found? Never mind. That might just do it. Come on, everyone, into position. I want everyone to stand precisely where they were when the victim died. This process is ridiculous. God moves in mysterious ways, Father. Indeed. And the devil makes work for idle hands, Mr. Stobart. Shh! Stobart, you are supposed to be dead. Please be dead more quietly. I tried to tell Nave the truth about his bloodstain. Didn't he believe you? You're a man of God. His faith is in science, Mr. Stobart, not God. Father? Yes, my son. Do you think the machine will give the inspector some insight into Henri's murder? He will find the answers he seeks, but he asks the wrong questions. This was no ordinary murder. Do you think Inspector Nave will ever figure this out? I'm not sure, although I'm no expert. Yeah, neither is he by the looks of it. You keep talking about the Gnostics. Who are they? They are a cult. A warped branch of Christianity that reveres Lucifer as equal to, or perhaps greater than, God. I can see how that might trouble the Vatican. The Vatican is the least of your worries. Please be quiet! Last time we met, you said the stolen painting was evil. Let me explain. I'm a Dominican, Mr. Stobart. The Dominican Order was founded to seek out and destroy heresy. Why? Because heresy is evil. Okay. For a thousand years we have fought against heresy. Indeed, our enemies gave us a nickname, the Hounds of God. Dominicanis, Dominican, you see? Very clever. Now this painting, the Manedictio, is without doubt heretical. Whoa, ho hold on. How can a painting be heretical? Because it is filled with Gnostic imagery. And Gnostics are heretics. What kind of imagery? Evil imagery. The Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail. Images of false saints, heretical saints. So you think the painting itself is evil? It trails murder in its wake, Mr. Stobart. And murder is police work, monsieur. Silence, please, both of you. The Ouroboros, what exactly is it? It is a Gnostic symbol. It marks something that is hidden. There are trees illustrated within the Ouroboros. They symbolize knowledge. So the Ouroboros alludes to hidden knowledge. The painting must be destroyed to stop this knowledge being revealed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That is the first set of results completed. Only 36 more to do. Please remain in position while we reset the machine. You may relax and talk amongst yourselves. Who are these false saints? Gnostic saints, not beatified by the church. They question orthodoxy, lure the unwary down dark paths of forbidden knowledge and condemn innocent souls to the fires of damnation. You mean like a Black Sabbath album? Vade Retro Satana. What's the matter? It is worse than I thought. What is it? It's just a sketch. Not just a sketch. The painting. 
I wondered if it was something I'd said. I have to get out of here. Now. Father Simeon, I forbid you to leave. This is an official investigation. Don't you understand? A great evil is upon us. The painting is evil. The heretical Gnostics in league with the devil himself. The devil? Don't you understand? The tabula veritatis. The tablet of truth. It is real. Well, well. Someone is upset. Pressing your witnesses a little too hard, Inspector Nave. And you are? This is official police business? Richard Langham, Interpol, serious art theft. We spoke on the phone, Inspector? Ah, yes, sir. Um, oh. you didn't say you would be attending my crime scene. What exactly is this machine, Inspector? <laughs> A little invention of mine, Monsieur Langham. It will compute whose blood this is on the floor, and... Not to worry, Inspector. Perhaps you could move aside? I'm intrigued to see what you're up to. Ah, of course. It is rather groundbreaking. Pizza box. Hmm. It looks like your suspect was a Hawaiian, Inspector. A Hawaiian? Mon Dieu! Mo! Get on to the Hawaiian Embassy straight away. There is a surf killer on the loose. Alert the airports and the surf shops. Sorry, Inspector. I mean, Hawaiian pizza. Your blood stain is a pizza sauce. Pizza? Mo! You fool! Forget the surf shops. Get on to the Italian embassy. This has mafia written all over it. Now, Inspector, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to your witnesses. And in the meantime, perhaps you should try and get your priest back. Madame Collard, Mr. Stobart, I assume. Can I buy you chaps a coffee? Langham sound a little more on the ball. Maybe he'd bring a dose of common sense to the case. So, Inspector Nave brought me up to speed and told me about you guys. I can guess what he said. But what's your interest in the robbery? I've been tracking a gang of art thieves for some time, and this looked like a good lead. But Nave is worse than useless. I was hoping you might be able to help. Oh, I flattered. Just doing our jobs. We all are, or at least trying to. So, maybe we can help each other. I gather you insured the exhibition. That's right, and uh, we're liable to lose a packet. Any leads so far? Maybe. There's a Russian guy called Madovsky who turns out to be the owner of the painting. Madovsky? You know him? Oligarch, oil, art, aluminium. Ex-KGB. Very nasty. You need to be careful. Madovsky's dangerous. He kills anyone who gets in his way. For a cop, Langham seemed okay. Trouble with doing deals with cops, there's usually a payback down the line. But I figured that'd be a price worth paying to bring down Madovsky. We found evidence that links Madovsky to the company that installed the security at the gallery. Hmm. Interesting. And one of his men, Guy called Shears, was in Paris on the day of the robbery. Really? We also found a letter from someone called Gainan wanting to buy the painting from Madovsky. Gainan? The name rings a bell? Did you find anything else about him? No, we were in a hurry. What about the priest? Ah, the good Father Simeon. Well, something spooked him, that's for sure. So I gather. He kept saying La Maledizio was evil. Perhaps he's right. 
It's certainly caused evil, hasn't it? I'll take leads from anyone, Mr. Stobart, even a crazy priest. Let's keep in touch. Thank you for your help. Coffee's on me, or rather, on Interpol. Miss Collard, Mr. Stobart. So, George, what do you think? Interesting. He seems to be on top of things. I agree. You know, Nico, this could start getting dangerous. You think Langham's right about Madovsky? Well, he appears to be on the ball. I thought he was cute. He was English, Nico. They're all cute to you. <laughs> he done depths, too. Oh, yeah? Well, what about my hidden depths? You showed me those long ago, Georges. Well, I'm off home to write up the story so far. You? I need to pay Bijou another visit. She's not been completely honest with me. Bijou had told me she didn't have anything to do with the business. But Lane said the opposite. One of them was lying. Bijou, it's George again. The air was heavy with incense and alcohol. Reminded me of the old alma mater. What happened? Josh, please help me. I am lost. Oh, help me. You must help me. What's wrong, Bijou? I can't play our song. I lost Henri and now our song. You mean the record? How did it happen? I stumbled and trod on it by mistake. What song was it, Bijou? I'm lost without it. Lost, lost. The name of the song, Bijou. Jasmine. It was our song. I'll see what I can do. Lane tells me you've got the provenance, that you did all the paperwork for the gallery. Oh dear, my head is going round and round and round. Bijou, I need to know. All the papers are in the safe, in the gallery office. Stop asking all these questions. Bijou, where's the key to the safe? Henri, you're not Henri. I'm keeping the key just like Henri asked. Could I borrow that key, please? Oh, I need my tune. Nothing else matters. I couldn't get any sense out of her in that state. I had to find a way to get the safe key. Please help me. Bijou's favorite record was smashed beyond repair. There was no way it could be fixed. I arrived back at the shopping arcade. I had a closer look at Bassam's stock. Check it out, George. I've had quite a stock update, and I've got to say the metrics on some of this stuff is startling. They looked interesting. A stack of those cards that play music when you open them. Hey, Bassam, how's business? Good to see you, George. Gotta say, the new branding's hitting the demographic right between the eyes. Sold anything? This is a soft market, George. Look to the margins. Look to the margins. Does one of your cards play the song Jasmine? Hmm, sounds familiar. Let me check the database. 
I think that's by the hairy lobsters. Bassam certainly knew his stock. Aha! Here it is. How much? It's yours. If you mention my shop to three other people. Done. Thanks. Thank you. Bijou, it's George again. The small stuffed dog had pride of place on the table. Its little face reminded me of Henri. Its coat even matched his hair. Some dogs really do look like their owners. Stealing a flower from a corpse, how low had I sunk? Bijou? Henri? Oh, you're not Henri. How about this card? It plays the tune. Oh, so... Oh, how wonderful! Dance with me, Henri. Bijou? Henri? Oh, you're not Henri. Oh, Ri, just dance with me. I found myself at Bijou's well-equipped dressing table. I grabbed a strip. Prepare for wax. A picture of Henri had pride of place. Lots of cotton buds, always handy for oiling machinery. little fella. I'll see you in Rio. I didn't want it on my eyes, but perhaps a slight dusting. My hair was now the same color as Henri's. Time to bring Henri back to life. Henri had more facial hair than me. I needed a brown goatee. With my mouth firmly closed, I added the wax strip to my upper lip. Instant goatee. Getting there, but I needed a little more. It was hard to see the color of Henri's eyes behind the glasses. I added Henri's glasses. I looked more and more like a gallery owner. Hmm, looking good, but not quite there yet. I needed to flower power my outfit. I added Henri's flower to my buttonhole. The jasmine definitely gave me that perfect hippie vibe. Getting there, but I needed a little more. I had the outfit exactly, but I needed something extra to ensnare the senses. I added Henri's breath to my disguise, made my eyes water. There. 
As I looked into the mirror, I saw Henri looking back at me. Henri, there you are, you naughty boy. Dance with me, my little roll mop. I've missed you. With pleasure, Cherie. Oh, Henri, isn't this wonderful? Just like old times. Darling, I need the safe key. Do you have it? Of course. Didn't I promise? Here, sweetie. Better let her sleep. I had the key. And besides, I wanted to get my hands on that letter of provenance. I was surprised to see Father Simeon at the cafe. George, a moment, if you please. Is everything all right, Father? No, my son. Not at all. Great evil is upon us. That sketch you showed me in the gallery, the study from La Maledictio, it showed an image hidden inside the Ouroboros. A dangerous image. Dangerous? The symbol represents a heresy, an object that the Gnostics call the Tabula Veritatis. The Tablet of Truth? It is a tablet of lies, a tool of Lucifer. Tell me more about this tabula veritatis. It is an artifact capable of undoing the whole of creation. It was smuggled out of the Holy Land millennia ago and brought to Europe by the Cathars, an evil Gnostic cult. In 1209, the Church launched a glorious crusade in the Cathar heartlands of southern France. We wiped out almost all the Cathars, and with them, the evil that is Gnosticism. My order, the Dominicans, were formed at that time to seek out and eradicate any remaining Gnostics. But we failed in our primary objective. We did not find the Tabula Veritatis. We presumed it lost, but the painting suggests it is still in Gnostic hands. How is La Melodexio connected to all this? I believe it contains clues that point to the location of the tablet. Clues constructed for a Gnostic to solve. If someone were to decrypt the painting and find the Tabula Veritatis, who knows what evil would be unleashed upon the world? So, you're suggesting that this image of the Tabula Veritatis is hidden in the Ouroboros on the painting? It is obvious now. The Ouroboros is a symbol of the Gnostics. And the tree it contained symbolized knowledge. Hidden Gnostic knowledge. Were the Cathars all killed? All that came forward to fight, but like a weed, their roots were deep. We did not fully destroy their evil. I still don't get why the Gnostics are so evil. They see God as simply the creator of the physical world, and reveal Lucifer as the lord of the spiritual realm. Wow. What's so terrible about this tablet? What, what does it do? Like Lucifer himself, the Gnostics could be anywhere. 
We must talk somewhere more private. Well, thank you, Father. That was some story. Be careful. Guard this knowledge. There are those who would do anything to find the tabula. Please excuse me. I have to get back to the gallery. I will remain here and follow you when no one is looking. I have more I must tell you. I had to get into the gallery and find the provenance, but I was really looking forward to hearing what else Father Simeon had to tell me. The door was locked. Time to look in the safe. I opened the compartment again. A note was attached to the front of a document wallet. It read, Sherry, this should do the trick. Your darling Wilfie. Now why would Hobbes be sending romantic little notes to Bijou? The ring had an inscription. Henri and Bijou forever. Huh. Henri had bought Bijou a big diamond ring. I had a feeling the ring would be useful. That had to be the elusive provenance. It clearly stated that Madofsky was the owner, but I'd learned never to take things at face value. I had to take a closer look at this. At first glance, the provenance looked authentic, but something wasn't right. The sketch was drawn on similar paper to the provenance. The coffee cup stains matched exactly, as did the tear. The provenance must have been created by Hobbes. It was a fake, which meant Madofsky wasn't the true owner. I had to get out there and find out what happened. The door wouldn't open. Something was blocking it from the other side. The glass was reinforced for sure. I wouldn't be able to smash it, and it wasn't going to open. But there had to be a way of getting through it. The diamond ring was just what I needed to cut through the glass. First Henri, now Simeon. Who was behind this? And what was Simeon trying to tell me? Simeon had been carrying a scan of an old manuscript with a covering note. Both were written in Latin. Fortunately, I hadn't forgot the Latin I'd learned at school. The note read, The tabula veritatis only appears in one file. The Inquisition into Heretical Depravity by Nicholas Emmerich, A.D. 1376. Scan attached. The note was signed by the Vice Prefect of the Vatican Archives. 
Simeon must have done some digging after he recognized the symbol on Hobbes' sketch. It was a photocopy of an old Latin text. Although a bit rusty, my Latin was still up to the job. It read, And thus spoke the accused. In this ritual we find succor. Clad in blue, the perfecti take the form of the spiritual and look towards the rising sun, toward the tree of knowledge. Clad in green, the credentes look the other way, towards the setting sun, where stands the tree of life. And all shall know that the light of knowledge is blue and that the light of life is green. For thus was the light of Eden, both blue and green, intertwined with the light of man to become pure. Pure light, white light, pure light will win. So it was written in the old texts, affirmed by the tabula veritatis. And these were the accused's last words. It was powerful stuff. I wondered how it connected to La Maledixio. The third passage read, Pure light, white light, pure so affirm and these were the interesting there was more about light and somehow the tabula veritatis had a connection Simeon would have known what it all meant but unfortunately Simeon was dead the illustration showed a group of colored figures engaged in some sort of ritual the blue and green figures appeared to be in control the crowd in the foreground were colored red I guessed it was a representation of the ritual in the text My God, what have you done? Huh? I know this looks like... Like you've been caught red-handed. Excuse me. Josh, something terrible has happened at the apartment. Nico, hang on. Lane, it's not what it looks like. Murdering a priest, Stobart? Is there no end to your depravity? It's a simple misunderstanding. Look, I need to go. I'll be at Nico's apartment. Nico! In here. I thought you were being attacked. When I arrived, there was someone here. He rushed me, knocked me down. Did you get a look at him? No. It happened so quick, and then he was gone. What a mess. This blood. Where's Marquez? I don't know. He must be badly hurt. Or dead. Not another killing. What do you mean? I just came from the gallery. Father Simeon's been shot. My God! Who did it? I don't know. But before he died, he begged me to stop the Gnostics from raising the devil. The devil? Whoever's doing the killing, Georges, it's certainly not him. Okay, but who? Simeon and Marquez were both attacked at the same time. Just, what are we up against? I don't know. But whoever came here was looking for something. The place has been ransacked. I'm going to clean up. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'll take a look around. Nico's neighbor had quite an impressive coin collection. It was still quite a blood stain. I really hoped that Marquez was all right. The chair had been knocked over in the fight, but there was something glinting underneath. It was Marquez's medallion. There'd clearly been a struggle. Marquez must have put up quite a fight. I spotted something in the mess. It was Marquez's family photo. 
Marquez wouldn't have intentionally left the photo behind. The sofa was a real mess, but there was something between the cushions. It was one of the photographs that Nico had taken during the robbery. It showed a section of La Maledicio. Marquez had written on it. Marquez had circled one of the figures and written Judas. I wondered if he was identifying him as Judas Iscariot. Back in Bible class, Judas was definitely one of the bad guys. Marquez had circled one of the figures in the tower and identified her as Magdalena. That had to mean Mary Magdalene. Marquez had scribbled the word Sants across the photograph. I wonder what he meant. Hey, Josh, you find anything? Marquez's medallion. And one of your photos of the robbery. Marquez scribbled all over it. I think he was trying to work something out in the painting. Simeon must have been right. The painting is some kind of map. We should... Hold on, my phone. Hello? Oui? This is Inspector Navet. I am looking for the American, Monsieur Stobart. Are you with him? Yes, he's right here. <gasps> Mon Dieu, stay calm, madame. Where exactly are you? In my neighbor's apartment. But why do you... Do not worry. I am just moments away. Be very careful. He is armed and highly dangerous. But he seems so charming. Trust me, madame. The leopard never changes his stripes. That was Nave. You're in big trouble. Lane saw me with Simeon's body. He set me up for sure. Well, Nave is on his way, and he'll be here any moment. We have to go, Nico, now. Down the back stairs. We'll go through Fleur's shop. Ah, there you are. Right on time. Sorry, Fleur, but we can't stop. Suit yourself. Damn it. Sergeant Moo is outside the door. He's talking to someone. Oh no, it's Adam. Who? My neighbor. Ah, the pug lover with the trashed apartment. That's the one. Hey, Fleur. Great to see you again. You were expecting us? 30 more seconds and you would have been caught. Charged with the murder of a priest. Whoa. How do you know about that? News travels fast through the ether, Georges. Take this. What do I do with a ball of yarn? Bribe Moo with a nice Aaron sweater? You will find the way. Now, excuse me. I think it's time you planned your escape. Oh, hi, Adam. Hi, Nico. They say I can't go up to my apartment. Oh, really? I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why, too. I'm George, by the way. Adam, I live in the apartment next to Nico. I know. I mean, how interesting. Fleur, can I sit here for a while until the police let me back in? By all means. So what now? You take a look around. I'll see if there's a way to get past Moo. Go ahead, Josh. Take a few. Thanks. Sorry to bust in on you like this, Fleur. Don't worry, Georges. I knew you were coming. You did? Uh, so what else do you know? There's a 36% chance of rain. Fleur, can you help me distract that police officer at the front door? 
Don't you want to play the game yourself? Game? What game? Oh, I thought you knew. Never mind. Do you know Adam? A little. I see great distress in his near future. Funny, so do I. You've known Nico a while. What flowers does she like? Yellow. No, wait. Yes. Yellow, definitely. There were boxes stacked along the wall. They were all labeled. Florist's foam. Flower food. Ribbon. Pee pee. Bouquet labels. Pee pee? My curiosity was aroused. It was a plastic statue. Careful with that. It's just come in. Special order. What is it? A replica mannequin piece. Fill it with water, pop in some batteries, and watch it go tinkle. Hmm. Very tasteful. Fleur's classics were blaring out into the street. A cheap plastic imitation of the mannequin piece from Brussels. It took AA batteries and had a water reservoir. Hey there, Adam. Oh, hey, George. What can I do for you? Do you know what's going on with the police? Uh, no, they wouldn't tell me. Good. I, I mean, strange. It's annoying. I'm really tired. It was a long drive. Oh, been anywhere interesting? I've just come back from a coin fair. It was mega. Well, that's fascinating. So, uh, tell me more about this coin fair. It's Europe's biggest. So much to see. I bet. Do you know Nico well? No, not really. Good. I mean, uh, good for you. What are you listening to? My meditation music. Crashing waves and trickling forest streams. So, what do you think of this coin? Oh my god, so that's a platinum 12 ruble. It is? I, I mean, uh, yeah, of course it is. You know, it's going to be a rough day, Adam. Why don't you keep the coin? Are you serious? I'll get my pal Stefan to value it. His coin shop's just around the corner. Hey, maybe you could use the money to redecorate your apartment. But it doesn't need redecorating. That's a matter of opinion. The lid wouldn't open while the disc was playing. I stopped the disc. Ocean dreamscapes. Just what I needed with the day I was having. Those might come in handy. I slotted the battery into the mannequin. A jaunty series of LEDs lit up around the figure. Fleur, do you mind if I change the music? Good idea. The sound of lapping waves was affecting Moo, but I was going to need something more to open the floodgates. I gave the trolley a push. Fleur certainly kept her bearings well greased. Jean's, what are you doing? I'm not sure yet, but there may be a plan forming.
I hope Moo didn't spot me. I poured the whiskey into the mannequin. Slancha, wee man. Slancha. I placed the statue in the trolley and switched on the waterworks. The mannequin cheerfully sprayed a stream of golden whiskey. Nice. Okay, that's Moo out of the way. Let's go, Nico. Where? To see Bijou. She's been telling me a crock of lies since day one, and right now, I want the truth. So you're telling me that Bijou and Ops were having an affair? Yeah, so, she's got some explaining to do. Bijou, I need to talk to you. Can't need to wait. I have such a sore head. No, it really can't. Oh, all right. In the daylight, and without the fog of incense, the apartment looked even weirder. How delightful to see you. May I present my friend Nico? George and I go way back. Oh, really? Well, don't worry, my dear. I won't steal him, though he is rather a cutie. <clears throat> uh, Bijou, we're here to clear up a few points, if you don't mind. How are you, Bijou? I have the teeniest of headaches, Cherie. It always happens when I sleep in the afternoon. I figured it was the champagne before the nap that had done the damage. I need you to be honest with me, Bijou. Do you know a painter called Hobbes? No, I don't think so. He certainly knows you. So many artists, darling. One can't remember them all. Hobbs appears to know you very well. I saw a sketch of you in his portfolio. Must have been a study for a painting. Are you sure there's nothing else? Quite sure. Did you know that the provenance was fake? For la malediccio? I had no idea. Lane said you had him approve it. Silly fool, he's getting confused again. This is a note from Hobbs that I found in your safe. How did you get access to that? How dare you? Bijou, you gave me the keys. I did? Oh, my head. I don't remember. We didn't do anything else, did we, Georges? The note is addressed to you. So Lane was telling the truth. You were in charge of the paperwork. Oh, so what if I was? That's not illegal? The note from Hobbes makes it quite clear that you knew him rather well. Oh, all right, I did. So, you lied to me. So you had the provenance made. You knew it was fake. I'm not admitting anything. I believe this is for you. A diamond ring? What has that to do with me? A gift for you. From Henri. Henri bought me so many expensive things. He never needed to. I think Henri asked Madovsky for more money so that he could buy you that ring. 
And maybe that's the reason he was shot. Nico. No, hon. She's right. Henri always felt he had to fight to keep me. Truth is, I love them both. Wilf and Henri. And now Henri is dead because of me. Go ahead. Ask your questions. I promise I will tell the truth this time. So, you and Hobbes are lovers? We have been ever since 75. Henri never knew about it. They were in a band together back then. So you are unfaithful to Henri right from the start. It was never cheating. I love them both. So you had Hobbes fake the provenance so that Lane would approve it for the insurance? Wilf passed it to me, and I persuaded Lane to sign it. He never knew it was a fake. Wilf is brilliant at what he does. So what was Madofsky's role in all this? It was all his idea. He'd had an offer on La Melodixio from someone. So Wilf put Madofsky in touch with me and Henri. He wanted to cash in on both the sale and the insurance. He set up the security company to deal with the robbery. I've been such a fool. Henri was never supposed to die. I know you didn't mean for that to happen. Wilf called me yesterday trying to comfort me. He said he would take care of me, that he had plans. Does that mean he has the painting? Yes. He joked about a secret place. Something about the original being behind my behind. I didn't understand. Thanks, Bijou. You've been very helpful. You know, I had the strangest dream earlier. Henri was here, and we danced together again. Such bliss. That must have been wonderful. Anyway, thanks again for your time, and... <clears throat> Nico, I think it's time we went to London. George, do you have something you need to tell me? No. Can't think of anything right now. Well, let's go, shall we? So in the end, Hobbes was at the heart of the whole scam. All we have to do now is find the painting. Yeah, then we blow everything open and nail Madofsky. I get that front page story. And I get to clear my name and keep my job. So much for your devil-worshipping Gnostic, George. Well, you know me. Nothing I like more than a good conspiracy. Hold on a second. What's the matter? This chain. It's from the gate. So? It's been forced. A break-in? Or maybe a break-out? Hobbs escaping from Lady Piermont? <laughs> maybe. But this doesn't feel right. Hey, Nico, take a look at this. Hmm, do you think someone used it to force the gate? Possibly, but their loss is our gain. You never know when you're going to need a crowbar. A blast on the horn had worked last time. Hey, 
Hey, get out of here. Seagull problem, George? That's one nasty bird. Hey, Nico. What, George? Do me a favor and honk the horn. No problem. The crane was rusted solid. I'd need more force to free it. Be careful, Georges! Wait there, Nico. I'll come and let you in. Something isn't right. We'd better be careful. Whoa. You'd better come and take a look at this. Mon Dieu. It's a Manet. Oh, no, it's not. It's a Hobbes. In the style of Manet. Or, as the experts prefer to call it, a forged Mane. Hobbes isn't just a restorer, he's a full-blown forger. Oh, that must be... You. Hobbes is good. You look very... pretty. And <laughs> that's you. Oh my, you look very... Violated. Yes. Is that Lady Piermo? Yes. Is she... Yep. In your... Yeah. Oh, so all along we were just modeling for a forgery. Forgery. Terrific, huh? I can add it to my murder rap. Let's just pretend this never happened, okay? Thanks, Josh. That was really starting to annoy me. Locked. If Hobbs is home, he's behind this door. A metal strip had been welded to the door frame, specifically to stop anyone levering the door open. What are you doing? I'm not exactly sure yet. I had a feeling the chain was going to be useful. That should do the trick. So what now? Let's see what Hobbs keeps tucked away up here. So this is Hobbes's lair. Not exactly the penthouse suite, is it? Nico. What is it? Hobbes's answer phone, and he's got messages. Let's hear them. It is a shame that you would like to be released from our agreement. It was mutually lucrative. But if that is your wish, I respect it. 
I shall send my men around to tie up any loose ends. Take care, my friend. Message two. Hello, darling. It's Bichu. Look, sweetie, but I'm going to have to put our little plans on hold. I've spoken to that insurance man and his girlfriend and told them pretty much everything. I want to be with you, Wilfie. But Henri's murder, you know. <laughs> anyway, I can't possibly leave him until his name is cleared. I feel so guilty, darling. Do you think he knew about us? Do take care with that Russian, my love. Bon voyage, my love. A bientôt. You have no more messages. Wow. So Bijou knew about everything. At least she was faithful to Henri in the end. And what if Madovsky's guy got here first? What if Madovsky's guy's still here? Who knows what useful objects this cupboard might hold? Don't get too excited, Georges. Well, looky here. A useful bottle of Diet Cola. You never know when you might need a Diet Cola. Hobbs' sandals lay on the floor. The sofa was a wreck. Strange. Hey, Nico. Come and take a look at this. This painting. There's something familiar about it. It's a woman's buttock, Shorsh. I know that, but I recognize him. Know what? I think it's Bijou. I don't want to know how you know that, Shorsh. But didn't she say the painting was hidden behind her behind? Exactly. So maybe... Damn it, it's screwed into the wall. La Maledizio! We found it! Amazing! You're sure it's the real thing? Well, I'm no expert, but yeah, it must be. Look, in the middle! It's the same face that Hobbes drew on his sketch, and the same symbol cut into his forehead. He must have uncovered it when he was cleaning the painting. But I wonder why a tree was originally painted over it. Like Simeon said, hidden Gnostic secrets. We've got the painting, Nico, but... There's got to be more to find in here. You're right. Once the police are involved, we won't get another chance. Oh, no. What's up? Nico. Oh no, Hobbs! Is he dead? Sure looks that way. Poor guy. He's been strangled. You know, maybe Simeon was right. It seems like anyone who gets close to this painting dies. The painting didn't kill him, Georges. This is all about money. Whoever did this was a professional. We need to be careful. Dead man's mints. No law against taking them. You have no shame, Georges. The mechanism was for opening and closing the skylight. It looked corroded. Take a look at this. Someone's cut out a painting from this frame, in a hurry. The canvas left around the frame looks just like La Maledizio. If we've got the original... Then whoever killed Hobbes has grabbed themselves a forgery. The skylight was slightly ajar. 
Nico, come and take a look at this. Looks like Hobbes has been busy. A map of Catalonia, sketches and notes on the painting. Do you think Hobbes was looking for this tabula veritatis? I think Hobbes was a lot cleverer than he seemed. This is the human pyramid from the painting. Hmm. Castel. The Catalan word for castle. Do you think the two are linked? Something was familiar about this part of the painting. Marquez was interested in this sketch as well. It scribbled all over it. It must be important. Another Ouroboros. Looks like Hobbes picked the painting apart for clues. There must be something here that shows us where the tablet is. A photograph of some kind of human pyramid. It's from an article about Castel Catala? It's Catalan, I think. Catalan Castle. Hobbes linked it to his sketch of the human pyramid from the painting. It looks like a sketch of a figure from La Melodexio. I guess Hobbes was mining it for clues. It's the tree from the painting, the, the one with all the people in it. Very creepy. I wondered what Hobbes was looking for on a map of Catalonia. Castel del Sants. I think Sants means saints. That's what Marquez wrote on the photo. So that would make a Castel del Sants a tower of saints. Like in the painting. This must be the clue. I guess this pretty much ties up the investigation, Georges. Yep. Should be enough to get Nave off my back. In the end, it was all about money. And greed. Madovsky wanted to sell the painting and claim the insurance. And he didn't care how many people he killed along the way. So what now? Hand over everything to the police? I guess so. With what we found out, Langham should have no trouble picking up Madovsky in Spain. I do wonder what that secret map points to. You still think the evil Gnostics are behind it all? I don't know. But I do have questions that haven't been answered. Such as? Well, what do those symbols on the painting mean? What was Marquez really up to? Why was the sign of the Tabula Veritatis hidden under layers of paint? And why is the building on fire? And what did... Did you say fire? We need to get out of here. I dropped the mints into the cola and quickly tightened the cap again. An open skylight looked like our ticket out of here. Tying the sheet to the crowbar made a halfway decent grappling hook. This should help us get out of here. After you, Nico. Terrific. Out of the fire, into the frying pan. Wait, Josh, isn't that... Langham. Oh, thank God. Hey, Langham! Langham! Help! We're up here! Quick. Round here. Why didn't he help us? I don't know. Maybe because he started the fire. Because he wanted to kill us. Why? I have no idea. You think he killed Hobbs? 
could be. Maybe Simeon too. So who is he? And who does he really work for? I don't know, but I do know one thing. This is not over. Josh, do you hear that? <laughs> London's finest. Now you be nice to the firemen. So what now? Now, we go to Spain in search of the Castel del Sanz and the Tabula Veritatis. Nico and I had thought the adventure was over. Actually, we'd only just started. Nothing was what it seemed. On a trail of corruption and greed, we'd stumbled upon a murderous conspiracy. A conspiracy whose roots lay in mysteries older than the written word. We didn't really have any choice. Catalonia, the foothills of the Pyrenees. After a short flight and a long drive, Nico and I arrived at Castel del Sanz. Back in London, we tracked down La Melodixia and it started to unravel its secrets. The painting was a coded map to the location of the Tabula Veritatis, an ancient artifact which Father Simeon had claimed could raise the devil, for which he and others had already been we had to find the tabula before the killers. We knew they would stop at nothing. Let's just hope we got here before the bad guys. Hmm. Seems quiet enough. Looks like nobody's been here for years. Must have been a beautiful place. Once upon a time. You think the tabula is really going to be here? Somewhere. If we can just decode the painting. Well, it looks deserted. Deserted? I don't think so. Did you see who it was? No. The sun was in my eyes. Looks like somebody's beaten us to it. But who? Medovsky? Langham? Whoever it is, we need to get in there. All right. You make a diversion, I'll try and reach some cover. And be careful. Are you kidding? You're the one who's going to get shot. Climbing over the wall would not have been a great idea. A helmet on a pole? Always useful. Oh, I just hope this works. Are you ready? Can't wait. I'd made it without getting shot, but I sure didn't feel lucky. Somehow, I had to distract the shooter again, and this time, I was on my own. With a ghost from the past giving me an evil stare. Oh, heck. The apples were bruised. Oh boy, you're gonna love this.
I distracted the goat, but it wouldn't take him long to eat that apple. The goat now had a whole pile of apples to tuck into. I tossed him my last apple. I'd blinded the shooter, time to make a dashboard. Don't think I can't see you, senor. If you so much as move an inch, I shall shoot you. Senor, please! Whoever you are, hold your fire! I'm not armed! Good. That makes it easier for me to shoot you. My name is George Stobart. I'm a friend. I have no friends. Well, that doesn't surprise me. All we want is a quick look inside the castell. I don't believe you. You are here to kill Senor Marquez. Senor Marquez? He's alive? What? Well, he'll vouch for us. You don't fool me like that. Get out of here before I kill you. Senor Marquez knows me, I swear. And I know a lie when I hear one. Go now, or I shoot. Wait, I have important information. Buste, vingue a mi. Do you understand what I am saying? Try saying it and let's see. Ah, well, uh, I'm George Stobart, and I come in peace. Do you mind putting that down? I've had a really bad day. Guns don't agree with you? Uh, no, and neither do goats. I've got bruises in places that, well, you know, places. So leave. We're here looking for something. Well, go look for it somewhere else. We were helping a man called Marquez in Paris. He is my father. I could see where she inherited her temperament. Your father? Well, he's our friend. Why should I believe you? Show me proof. We tracked down his painting. La Maledictio. Look. Where did you get this? In London. All right. You better come with me, but no funny business, okay? You know, you sound just like my friend Nico. Nico! What's going on, Ramon? Who's out there? Some crazy American. Don't worry. Eva will deal with him. Papa! These people want to talk to you. Eva, I thought we agreed to shoot intruders on sight. You, how did you find me? It wasn't easy, senor. We thought you were dead. You were wrong. They've brought you something, Papa. Can it be? At last, la malediction. Well, Senor Marquez, looks like La Maledixio hangs in its right place again. Indeed. I have waited all my life for this. But something interesting? A painting. It is different 
the face in the middle. The one with the symbol of the tabula veritatis on it? How do you know about the tabula? A priest told me. Said it was the devil's work. Pah! Priests! Full of lies, every one of them. Oh, really? Well, this priest said that the tabula was an instrument to raise the devil. Fool! Who would want to raise the devil? But you do want to find the tabula. Yes, because it is a Gnostic treasure. It is special, and my duty is to keep it safe. I was sure that Marquez still wasn't telling me the whole truth. And now? I shall decipher the painting and find the tabula. Before she died, my mother said that once the painting hung here again, its meaning would become clear and the route to the tabula would be revealed. So, what's the answer? Where's the tabula? I don't know. The room has changed. Was there something different about the room back then? No. Yes. I don't know. You must help me. Well, how? I I'm not a Gnostic. Senor, you must, because soon the Russian will be here. He knows about Castel del Sanz? I regret, senor, that in Paris I told his sidekick a little too much. Ah, well, I guess we'd better figure this out. And fast. I'll go and keep watch. Shoot on sight, remember. Well, Nico, what now? You try and work out just why the painting has to be in this room. I'll go and see if Eva knows anything. Whether he knew it or not, I was sure Marquez had the answers. The carved figure was like the bearded man in the painting. It also reminded me of the figures from the illustration in Simeon's notes. The stone fireplace was old and dusty. It looked like it had lain undisturbed for decades. La Maledizio, back in its rightful place. But what were the clues? The plinths looked like they could be rotated. Senor Marquez? Mr. Stobart? If we're going to find the tabula... Yes? Then you will have to help. Of course. I mean, by being totally honest with us. <laughs> when have I not been honest? Tell me about the painting. When I was a child, I would stand here for hours just staring at it. Who was the mysterious painter, El Serp, the serpent? And what did it mean, La Maledictio, the curse? I asked my father, but he just told me to be patient. He said that one day I would know everything. Senor, can you decipher any of the painting? The Tower of Saints, of course. I knew it was a castell. And the saints themselves are Gnostic. You see the woman in red? The one you marked in the photo? She is Mary Magdalene. We revere her as Christ's greatest disciple. The rest, I don't know. The symbol on the face, it is obviously the tabula. But the elements around it, I don't know. When were you last here, Signor? Not since that day, when my father was killed. So why did the painting bring us here? As I said, because only here in this room will its clues become clear. Why is the Tabula Veritatis so important to the Gnostics? It is an object of immense power. My ancestors kept it safe for hundreds of years. They brought it to Catalonia as exiles long ago. 
In any generation, only one Gnostic knows its exact location. My father, Xavier, was the last of these. He knew dark forces were gathering, but I was too young to learn the secret. So he commissioned La Malediction, embedding clues to the location of the tabula within the painting. But what is the tabula? What does it do? I do not know. I know only that in the wrong hands, it would be catastrophic for mankind. What happened back in Paris? We thought you were dead. A man came to the apartment looking for Miss Collard. He mentioned a stolen painting owned by a Russian. Obviously, I informed him that I was the true owner. Obviously. Next thing I knew, this thug had me pinned to a chair and was threatening to shoot me. So I told him of the castel, and while he telephoned his boss, I hit him with a little china dog. Guess he didn't know you were the pugnacious type. So Eva is your daughter? She was a gift from God, late in my life. One day she will find room for Gnosticism in her heart. I am sure of it. Why would a Dominican priest, Father Simeon, describe the Gnostics as evil? That order was founded specifically to fight heresy and to eradicate Gnosticism. Behind their backs, the Dominicans were nicknamed the Dominicanes, or Hounds of God. For years, these dogs hunted down and butchered my people. They called us heretics, but in truth, they sought to find and seize the tabula. You shall get back to it. The photo was of the Marquez family. On the fireplace behind them were two identical statues. There was a piece of stone on the wall. It looked like a discarded statue. The door was locked. The green stone figure was barefoot and wearing a hat. It resembled the statues in Marquez's family photo. It was the lower half of a green, barefooted statue. Like the other one, this looked a lot like the statues in Marquez's family photograph. So, until you came here, you knew nothing about the castel? Didn't know, wasn't interested. I better get back on guard in case anyone else shows up. Your father needs our help, Piva. My father needs rest, peace and quiet. Not more of this Gnostic nonsense. So, what did you find out? Not a lot. Eva thinks her father's losing it. She doesn't have much time for Gnosticism. She's never been here before. In fact, Marquez never even talked about the place. As far as I can tell, she and her father never got on. She left home the moment she could. Hmm. I don't blame her. So why is she here now? Marquez begged her. Said he was in danger. I guess maybe I'll go inside and have a look around too. Tell me if you find anything. I'm not having much luck so far.
The blue-colored statue was robed with a bald head and bare feet, a third one resembling the ornaments in the family photograph. Hello, Eva. Senor Stobart. Please, call me George. I'd rather not. When are you and your girlfriend leaving? Actually, she's not my girlfriend. I don't know what your scam is, senor. You may have fooled my father, but you don't fool me. Well, I can sure see where you get your manners from. Tell me about your father. When my mother died, he brought me up. As a Gnostic? <laughs> he tried to teach me that stuff. Said I had a religious vocation. Turns out I didn't. On my 18th birthday, I left home and never went back. Tell me about Ramon. Apparently he worked here when he was a boy. A loyal servant, even though the family left and never came back. More fool him. Tell me about yourself. I left home as soon as I could, lived a bit, and now I own a bar in Marseille. That explains why you know how to use a gun. No, senor. I learned how to use a gun so I could get rid of vermin. Eva was a real... charmer. What do you know about La Maledixio? My father has been obsessed by it all his life. He thinks it's full of secret messages. I think it's a crock of sh... Sure you do. Nico tells me you don't really know about Gnosticism. Don't know, don't care. And I don't need saints and gods telling me how to live my life. I can see why you and your father don't get along. So, you don't know anything about Gnostics? They're a religious sect. They belong in the past. My father's obsessed with them, and that's all I know. Marquez said that the painting contained clues only a Gnostic could solve. But when it was back in this room, all would become clear. The statues were facing outward, just like in the Marquez photo. I waited with bated breath for something to happen. Nothing. Ah, what is this? A staircase. I never knew. We must go up. We don't have much time. Stairs. Always stairs. Oh my god, look at this. Jules? Jules? Hmm. What's this? A piece of burnt paper with the word Wolfram. That sounds familiar. Wolfram. I curse that name forever. What do you know about Wolfram, senor? Wolfram. I spit on the name. So you have lived here for a long time? All my life. My father served here before me. In fact, he named me after senor Xavier's favorite saint. Saint Ramon. Patron saint of the falsely accused. That's nice. Not really. The Moors put a padlock through his mouth. Oh, I see. Well, I guess there's a lesson there for all of us. What is Wolfram? It was a mining company, run by a murdering swine called Ganon. 
In the civil war, they backed the fascists. In return, Genin was given soldiers to do his dirty work. They came here, brought their bloody war to this house, and killed Senor Xavier. They shot Xavier? Senor Marquez's father? I was just a boy, but I remember like it was yesterday. Shot him and his friend, Hernandez, like animals. Why did they come here? They were searching for something, but they brought death with them. But there is one thing I have never understood. Javier tried to escape through the library. But the library windows are barred. It is a dead end. This Kenan, who was he? He was Swiss, a businessman and a murdering swine. So what did he want here? I don't know. When he wasn't torturing the locals, he disappeared to the library. Spent weeks in there, making notes and studying maps. His men, they crossed the whole of Catalonia searching for something. Did they find it? Who knows? One day, Ganem just disappeared. He never came back. An accident, perhaps, in the mountains. May his soul rot in hell. The soldiers didn't stay long to search for him. They hated him, too. The name Genan was familiar. He was the person who had tried to buy La Maladexio. A coincidence? Perhaps. There is no such thing as coincidence. So, when the soldiers left, you took back the house? Yes. A few years later, I returned and cleaned the place up. It broke my heart. I locked the library. I could not bear to touch Gaiman's papers. Can I have a look at the library? No. I have kept it locked to honor the memory of Senor Xavier. Please, this is important. I lost the key. You lost it? That evening when I locked it up, I drank to the memory of Senor Xavier. The cellars were well stocked, Senora. It was a long night. I hid the key, then forgot where I hid it, so it is lost. That was all that was left in the morning. I haven't touched a drop since. I needed to find out what Ganon had been working on in that library. Hello, little one. The floor of the car was littered with keys from sardine cans. I picked up what looked like an old diary. It was Ramon's. The library will forever be a shrine. No one will enter. I shall hide the key in a safe place. Once I've eaten. I have just what I need and know what to do. Oh, beautiful lady, your eyes are so blue. I just can't stop thinking of you. Hmm, Ramon was quite the budding poet. Our lives are entwined like ivy on a tree. That is what you mean to me. Nice. Hey, I was reading that. In amongst the rubbish on the car floor was an old brandy bottle. An old pair of shoes. 
someone had been sleeping in the car. But long, long ago. A 5G71. Extraordinary. The dashboard seemed intact, but this old family car would never drive again. The inside of the car was in a bad state. Have you no respect for great art? Pretty indigestible, huh? According to the sundial, it was mid-afternoon-ish. The wind chime looked like it was made from old cans. I wondered if it was Ramon's handiwork. One old sardine can was bulging slightly. I fished around. There was something in it. And there it was, the key to the library. Ramon had been true to his word. This place was like a shrine. The table had been cleared. The old armor was in pride of place. Ganon clearly hadn't moved it. The trunk contained someone's personal possessions. At a guess, Ganon's. I wondered what secrets they might hold. The map had interesting markings and scribbles all over it. Georges would be so jealous. So, what is this place, Signor? It is my family's chapel. It's not like any chapel I ever saw. Where's the altar, the crucifix, the Christian symbols? And this fresco, what's that? How extraordinary. It tells a story. It depicts the journey of my ancestors, the Cathars, and their escape from the hilltop fortress of Montsegur with the Tabula Veritatis from under the very noses of the soldiers of the Albigensian Crusade. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Who are the Cathars? And, and what have they got to do with the tabula? The Cathars were Gnostics. They lived in the south of France in the 12th century, at peace with the Jews and the Catholics of the Languedoc. They preach that men and women are equal, that God is within you, and that the Church is an obstacle to salvation. The Pope found their core beliefs abhorrent. The Cathars accused him and his Church of corruption. He condemned them as heretics. When the Pope learned that they were the guardians of the Tabula Veritatis, he conspired with the King of France and called for a holy war to wipe them out. The Albigensian Crusade was a callous, ruthless massacre. The final confrontation took place here, at Montsegur in 1244. The Crusaders believed that they had slaughtered all the heretics, but a handful managed to escape with the tabula. They traveled south across the Pyrenees along secret trails. They brought the tabula here to Catalonia to be hidden once more.
Sadly, it was not the end of their trials. The Spanish Inquisition saw to that. Nevertheless, for generations, my ancestors continued to guard the secrets of the tabula. So, you understand why La Maledizio is important to me. It will lead us to the tabula again, so we can keep it safe from those who wish to abuse its power. The painting brought us up here, Senor. We need to find out why. It was a large marble statue of a young man holding some sort of colored glass lens. These statues... What of them? They're just like the figures in the painting. And on the fireplace. Indeed. They are the two pillars of the Gnostic faith in harmony. And the bearded one is Yahweh, Jehovah god of the physical world. The other is known by many names. Helel, Ishtar. He is the bearer of light. Luxfere. Lucifer. Lucifer? So you guys are devil worshippers? No. When he is in balance with Jehovah, Lucifer is the god of desire and ambition driving humans to be inquisitive, to discover, to advance. Just as Jehovah, when he is in balance with Lucifer, is the god of order. Jehovah stands for selflessness and altruism. Gnostics worship the harmony of both gods in balance. But what if one were to rule without the other? If Jehovah ruled without Lucifer, then, individuality would be surrendered. Mankind would be wholly conformist, mindlessly dependent. Mere pawns of a controlling power. And what if Lucifer ruled without Jehovah? Ambition and desire would be transformed into unbridled greed, and man would lust only for wealth and power. Society would descend into chaos, Disorder and war would prevail. Then, Lucifer would be the devil indeed. I removed the small leather cover to reveal a crude crystal lens. Colored light streamed through and shone onto the fresco. The color changed from yellow to green. The color changed from yellow to green. The color changed from green to turquoise. The color changed from turquoise to blue. It was a candelabrum holding a single candle. Just what this place needed. Bit of mood lighting. If only I had a few scatter cushions. Amazing. The light is showing the path. The path of the bonzon. The what? The sacred trail my ancestors took across the Pyrenees, carrying the Tabula Veritatis, from Montsegur, across the mountains, to this town. And which town is that? I don't know. That I cannot answer. But its coat of arms is quite distinctive. But how does it bring us closer to the Tabula? It tells us the route the Tabula took 800 years ago. I think that's all we're going to find up here. You're right. We should return to the hall. Eva will be getting worried.
okay, we found the route of the Bonzom Trail. How does it help us? It must somehow relate to the painting. <coughs> Papa, are you crazy? What are you doing? I'm fine. Don't fuss. You got me out here to look after you, so let me do it. Ramon is outside keeping watch. Georges, I'm glad you're safe. What did you find? There's a secret chapel above the fireplace. But it's not your average everyday chapel. It's a Gnostic chapel. All laid out for worshipping not one god, but two. What? I'll tell you when we have more time. You know, I found some things too, which might connect with all that. Come to the library. Oh, uh, could you bring the painting? I think we're going to need it. What are you doing with La Maledizio? Nico found something and asked me to bring the painting. I promised to take care of it. It was a shield on which heraldic symbols had been painted. The coat of arms was exactly the same as the one depicted on the fresco. It read Berga. Eva, go with him. Make sure the painting comes to no harm. I should stay with you, Papa. Don't worry about me. La Maledicio is more important. Have you brought the painting? Sure, why do you want it? Because I found out what Ganon was up to. The Ganon who tried to buy the painting from Madovsky? No, Ganon who led the fascists here during the Civil War. Ganon who then spent months here searching for something. And who vanished one day, leaving that trunk full of goodies over there. You think he's connected to the Ganon who wrote the letter to Madovsky? It seems likely that they were related. Hmm, maybe. So what's the plan you've uncovered? Take a look at this. It's Ganon's map. He was searching for something. Searching for what exactly? The Tabula Veritatis, I guess. You think he found it? I doubt it. If he had, then people wouldn't still be chasing after the painting. So why did you want me to bring it? See this scribble in the sea? It's the same shape as the circles around the Ouroboros. Yes. Genan thought that pattern in the painting had something to do with a map of Catalonia. So, I guess we try to finish what Ganon started. I'd put money on those circles around the Ouroboros being places in Catalonia. But which places? Maybe the painting can give us some more clues. I lifted the hat out of the chest. There was something tucked beneath the shirt. I picked up the folded note. It was a telegram. I removed the oilcloth from the chest. I picked up the blanket. There was nothing underneath it. There was nothing underneath the other shirt. I put everything back in the chest.
I deciphered the telegram. The tabula veritatis was smuggled out of Montsegur to Catalonia by a group of Cathar survivors. I have confirmed this from confessions extracted by the Dominican Inquisitor Emmerich of Girona. It was signed Wolfram. The map had to be the key. This was one of the locations highlighted on the fresco. And this was the starting point of the journey of the Bonan, the good man, the Cathars, right? The Dominican monk Emmerich was from Girona, the dog-headed priest on the painting, two locations down. If the vignettes on the painting were anything to go by, I needed to find two more. The village of San Ramon. San Ramon. Ramon told me he was named after a, a Saint Ramon. There's also a saint on the painting. Let me guess, he has a hefty padlock through his lips? I'd found three locations. Now I had to track down the last one. So, the coat of arms on the fresco pointed us towards Berga. Then it must be important. I could see a pattern emerging. The locations had formed an odd cross shape, similar to the layout of the orbs depicted on the painting. This is the center point of the cross, so the tabula must be here. Montserrat, it has to be Montserrat. The question is, what's Montserrat? It's a monastery in the mountains, quite a tourist spot. But there's something else. I think it used to be a Gnostic refuge, hundreds of years ago. Bravo, my friend. Dovsky? No, Langham. No, it's Genam, isn't it? Very good, Miss Collar. So, what happened to the real Langham? He went for a long swim in the same. Now, I was expecting to have to rip this place apart and retrace my grandfather's steps, but I do believe you have saved me quite a lot of work. The tabula is at Montserrat. Who would have thought it? The old man will be coming with me. No, please. Take me instead. He doesn't know anything. And you do? I think not. But he is old. Eva, hold your peace, child. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I will. Man is weak, servile, controlled. He must be freed, freed from all constraints, free to fulfill his desires. And you plan to raise the devil to achieve that? Not the devil. Lucifer. Now, if you don't mind. We have a long journey ahead of us. Come on. They can rot in there. We have to get out of here now. I assume that lunatic is as dangerous as he looks. I'm afraid so, Eva. I think he's killed before. You know, Nico, we were chasing Madovsky, but all along we were really up against Ganon's grandson. Look, daylight. That doesn't make any sense. It's a false door, Nico. So that's why Marquez's father tried to escape through here. He didn't have time to open the false door. Georges. Come on, Eva. Let's go. We need to rescue your father and stop Langham before he gets the tabula. Eva, I think you'd better stay here. Are you kidding? You'll need me, especially if there's a fight. Eva, it'll be very dangerous. 
Signora. You do not understand. It is my duty. Okay. We'd better check up on Ramon first. Sure. Then we will go and kick some ass. Couldn't have put it better myself. Montserrat was way up in the mountains, a major tourist destination. But we went there as tourists. We had an old man to rescue and an ancient tablet to find. And standing in our way was a cold-blooded killer. Why would the tabula be hidden up here of all places? For hundreds of years, the mountain has been kind of a sanctuary. There's an old Benedictine monastery up the hill. Well, I guess that's where we need to start looking. Wow, it's empty. Where is everyone? This place is normally full of tourists. I don't like the look of this one bit. At least it's not monks with guns. Don't even go there, Nico. Time to bring out the dumb tourist. <laughs> it's a role you were born to play, Georges. We're moving away from the monastery. Yes, but with those goons in the way, we have to find a different approach. Maybe there's some other way around, via the cable car station? Or at least someone in there can tell us what's going on. Someone's coming out. Quick, we need to hide. I think it's Lango. Lock everything off. Lock the whole place down, understand? The tabula's got to be up in the monastery. I'm sure of it. Come on. Yes, boss. Close all the routes up to the monastery, and then make the old man talk. Yes, boss. This time, don't be so gentle with him. Did you hear that? They haven't found it yet, but Senor Marquez must be in a bad way. Listen, I have to follow those bastardos. I might be able to slip through on my own. Sure. We'll see if we can find another way up. You think she'll be okay? Eva can handle herself. My God! Nico! What is it? This telescope! It's free! There were a couple of people stuck in the cable car. They looked kind of familiar. Then I realized it was my old friends Dwayne and Pearl Henderson. The Andersons had an uncanny way of showing up wherever I went. I signaled them back. I wasn't sure they'd seen it. Pearl was mouthing something and gesturing. Pearl seemed to be writing something on the window. It said, Help. Stuck. Door code 07. Nine, seven. The station door must have needed a code to open it. I wondered how Pearl came to know that. I idly wondered whether there was more to find by looking at the scenery. It was the other station for the cable cars. Wait, what's that? That rock looks familiar. Nico, take a look at this and tell me what you see. You're right. That rock looks like a head. I've seen that shape before. Take a look at this.
The face in the Ouroboros, it's exactly the same shape as that rock. That can't be a coincidence. And you know what? Langham's got the forged picture, the one without the face. So the rock won't have meant anything to him. Nico, I don't think the tabula's up at the monastery. I think it's down there somewhere, around that rock. Come on, Nico. Pearl's giving me the code to the door. What? Pearl? Who? How? Trust me, Nico. I've got friends in low-hanging places. Huh. There's no one here. Looks like everything has been shut down. A metal lunchbox. Someone sure wanted to keep their cheese safe. Hey, is anybody there? Whoa, did you hear that? We're stuck in here, help! How about that, Miko? A talking lunchbox. Huh, what will they think of next? I better take it with me. There was no lock, but the door wouldn't open. Go away! Hello? Josh? There's someone in there. Are you alright in there? Just go away. Uh, uh, wait, 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 please. We mean you no harm. Please, come out. I'm staying right here until I know it's safe. The huge cogs were part of the cable car mechanism. They looked very powerful. A talking lunchbox. Locked. With no key, I was going to have to find a way to break into it. The box was now wedged in the cogs, or rather, the giant can opener. The control panel looked complicated. It wasn't powered up, and the smell of burnt electrical components hung ominously in the air. That's quite a mess you've made there, Georges. You know what they say about making omelets, Nico? You can't make them without strawberry jam? Strawberry jam was smeared all over the machinery. Just as I thought, it's a two-way radio. Uh, can anyone hear me? Dwayne, this is George. George Stobart. Holy cow, George, just the fella I need. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Dwayne, and, and don't you worry, I'll have you out of there in a minute. Uh, you reckon you can get the cable car running again? No, the console isn't working properly. I've got no idea why not. George, this is Pearl. Get Cat to help you. She knows everything about that place. Cat? Is she the girl in the closet? Has she locked herself in? Oh dear. Let me talk to her, darling. Cat? I found you a friendly voice. How do you know my name? Cat, dear. It's me, Pearl. Pearl? How did you get here? That's not possible. Listen, darling, it really is me. But I'm talking on the radio. George here is a very decent guy, and you should open the door. I'm not going to fall for that. Prove it's you. All right. Remember we discovered we both love musicals? Yeah, and my favorite one is... How does it go now? Help out. 
I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical. From Marathon to Waterloo, in order categorical. Um, I'm very good in integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and amalculus. In short, in matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. All right, only Pearl would know that, and I trust her. Who are you? I'm George, and this is Nico. How did you end up in a closet? There were some guys with guns. They took over the whole station. I hid in here. We're trying to avoid them, too. I was quite surprised, you know. They never mentioned guns at the job interview. Really? Uh, we need to use the cable car. Can you operate it? Yeah, if the console was working, but they sabotaged it. And there's no way to get it started? Mm, there might be. Let me see. See that burned-out fuse down there? In the back by the prongs? Yeah. The idiots stuck a spanner in there and blew the fuse. They wanted to make sure no one could use the cable cars. Connect those two prongs somehow, and the console should restart. How on earth are we going to reach that? I don't know. But don't stick your arm in there. You'll get fried. Well, I'd done stranger things in my life. The paper clip was now all sticky. I stuck the paper clip to Trevor's back. I bet he could work in an office now. Trevor could help, but I couldn't just throw him in there. I set him down at the edge where it was safe. Go, Trevor, go! Poor Trevor looked like he needed therapy, but the console was working. The console. It's working. Cool. I can send you down there if you want. Let me just bring the cable car up here. Pearl and Dwayne are going to be mighty relieved. Oh, they must have been going down in the other cable car. Come on, Nico. There's no time to lose. As we got closer to the face in the rock, I knew for sure that we were on the right track. It was definitely the same as the face in the painting, but with one difference. The symbol of the tabula was missing from the rock formation. Well, here we are. Hmm, but no way to reach the face. Let's have a look around. There must be a way up. Georges, the chapel looks like it's been built right into the rock. You're right. We should take a look inside. I wonder, how old do you think the chapel is? I'm guessing the exterior is a couple of hundred years old, but the inside? Who knows? Some parts could be much older.
You think somehow this chapel might be connected to the face in the rock? At a guess, I would say so. <laughs> hey, look, it's Pearl and Dwayne. Come on, honey bun, things ain't that bad. You just don't understand. Today's been a disaster. But the monastery was closed. We got stuck in the cable car. And now this place is a building site. Aw, oh, sweetie pie. This was supposed to be the spiritual highlight of our trip, Dwayne. But the only spirit I see is that rotten turpentine over there. Aw, oh, heck. Clearly, the Hendersons weren't having a great vacation. It was a stone carving showing a kneeling figure. Wood shavings. This was one building site that needed Mr. Tidy. Mmm, they smelt exotic. My mother always said cleanliness is next to godliness. A battered oil drum had been tucked into the scaffolding. Great to see you again, Mr. Henderson. Great to see you too, George. Great work back there with the cable car. <laughs> Is Pearl okay? Uh, I wish. Uh, I'm afraid we're having one of those days where everything goes wrong. <laughs> Tell me about it. What have you been up to since we last met in Claramonte? Well... There was that little sideshow in Rome, but we can't talk about that. Uh, you know why, George. I do? Uh, I mean, I do. Why? Top secret. Need to know, Nico. Dwayne is, uh, a snoozer. Don't you mean a sleeper? No way, honey. A snoozer is at least two pay grades up from a sleeper. Uh, uh, so I hear. Anyway, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Miss, uh... Nicole Collar. Call me Nico. Well, how's about that? So this is the beautiful Nico. No wonder you've been hiding her away from me, Georgie boy. Gosh, uh, no, I, uh... It's lovely to finally meet you too, Mr. Henderson. George has told me so much about you. Oh, call me Dwayne, my dear. And let me assure you of one thing. Everything you've heard is quite possibly true. Dwayne was loud, large, and short-sighted. But boy, was he a charmer. Is there anything we can do for Pearl? I sure as hell hope so, George. She's been planning and researching this trip for years. Our little pilgrimage. And Santa Cova Chapel here was the cherry on the cake. Not a thing she don't know about this place. Madonna, blah, blah, blah. Chapel built in, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> She's Santa Cova's very own walking encyclopedia. Well, weeping encyclopedia, I should say. <laughs> So, what brings you to Santa Cova? Pearl's idea from the get-go. <laughs> Ever since the unfortunate car accident back home, she's been scouring those pilgrimage brochures. Gotta be full of wonder and life-changing imagery. Got to have uh, penance potential. Got to offer a, a real spiritual experience. Well, I'm sure this place will be very spiritual, once it's finished. <laughs> if the chapel is not what she expected, how about the monastery? Hot dog, no! That place is for tourists, not pilgrims. 
You said she expected a spiritual experience? Yeah, well, that's what the brochure promised. Pilgrimages, <laughs> little monk fellas, singing, uh, shafts of light, the, the whole shebang. Smells, bells, and heavenly lights. Yeah, that's what the lady wanted. <laughs> oh, excuse me, yeah, Pearl needs me. There, there, dear. Pearl could be a mine of information about the chapel, if we could just cheer her up. The scaffolding was a little loose. Everything rattled. It made a surprisingly dulcet noise. A modern plaster altar had been built against the rock. An empty, coffee-stained mug had been left by the altar. A statue of the Madonna and Child watched over the chapel. An old candelabra hung from the ceiling. I sprayed the shavings with bread. Delightful. I put the scented shavings in the mug. I lit the scented shavings. A sweet aroma started to fill the room. I lit the candles on the candelabra. It was a beautiful antique fire hazard. I rested the side mirror precariously on the candelabra. I secured the mirror in place with some yarn. Now that was something. The light from the candelabra spilled over the black Madonna like waves of spiritual goodness in candle form. The hammer produced a promising sound. That sounded like an A. What are you up to? Look, I made a churchenspiel. A. B, if I wasn't mistaken. Well, that was fun. I poured the turpentine into the paint can. The hammer produced a promising sound. F sharp. G. B. A G I had it. It was the tune Dwayne was humming. Jos, that's Ave Maria. Let me have a go.
Wow, you really nailed that, Nico. Yep, this mop really is pretty special. Leave this to me. Pumpkin? Oh, ma! What? The sound of angels, the lights of heaven, the smell of party, and... Yes? The Madonna, I do believe. Tears? She's crying, Dwayne! The Madonna's crying. Timmy, wrong side of the road, not my fault, broken leg, compensation claim, forgive me, poor Timmy. Oh, Pearl, my precious, you're such a sensitive soul. Well, now that's done. I feel my soul's floating on air. We can get on with our pilgrimage, Dwayne. Just another thousand clicks to go. Pearl was back to her usual cheery self. Mrs. Henderson. George, dear boy. How you feeling? Oh, just fine, thank you. I have just seen a miracle, George. It's all gonna be all right from now. I'm sure it is, Mrs. Henderson. I'm sure it is. So, Pearl, what have you been up to since we last met? Well, George, I've been on a journey. Oh, really? Well, what kind of journey? A spiritual one. A journey along the road to enlightenment. Wow. And is that what brought you here? It is, though Sanacova is but one step on that road. What's so special about Sanacova? It's an ancient and very holy place. I've spent the last year researching it, and I can truly say there is nothing I do not know about it. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that rock out there? No, only that for a thousand years, people have claimed to see a face in its shapes. Still, uh, keep him busy, Dwayne? Like the man said, George, that old kaleidoscope keeps getting shaken, and the pieces are ever in flux. Guess it's your job to pick him up, huh? Well, somebody has to do it, compadre. I enjoyed talking to Dwayne, but I was rarely any the wiser afterwards. What can you tell me about the statue? I read that the Black Madonna has been here since the 9th century. She's called the Virgin of Montserrat. Some say the original was moved to the cathedral. But Duane and I know that's just a bluff, don't we, honey? We sure do. This one is the real McCoy. What can you tell me about Santa Cova? Well, dear, they call it the Chapel of the Holy Grotto. It was built directly into the mountain itself in 1696. It survived the Napoleonic Wars, mudslides, civil war. But the chapel is still standing today. It's a miracle. Or a restoration. What was that, dear? Yes, a miracle. Pearl, does this mean anything to you? Oh, nothing, dear. Apart from the obvious Gnostic connotations, of course. What? You know, the Dominicans. All those Gnostic saints. Doubton Thomas, Judas. And you see the woman in the red cloak? The infamous Mary Magdalene herself. A lady in red. That's enough now, Dwayne. You know my feelings about her. Pearl knew her Gnostic onions, all right. 
then there's the Ouroboros, of course. Something special about it? Well, if I remember rightly, there was an Ouroboros right here in this chapel. Back in the 30s and 40s, a chapel was renovated. The workmen uncovered numerous symbols carved in the rock. Amongst them was a fine Ouroboros. But that's amazing. So, where is it? Oh, it's not there now. Oh. It was considered blasphemous, so they plastered over it. Sweetheart, I think it's time for us to go. The road to enlightenment waits for no woman. Tis the pilgrim's lot, George. It was so nice to see you again. And meet your girlfriend. We're not... Take this radio, Nico. Never know when you might need it. Uh, keep an eye on our boy George here. Poor little lost lamb. I'm not... Don't worry, this little lamb's in safe hands. Bon voyage. Bye-bye, dears. See ya. Nico, don't even start. Little lamb? Let's focus on the task in hand, shall we? Okay. This Ouroboros that Pearl mentioned. You're right. We need to find it. There was a recess in the wall with a Latin word carved above it. Puritas. Purity. I'd seen that word before somewhere. That wasn't worth trying. I thought I'd heard a faint click. I hoped this was the right thing to do. Hey, Nico, I found the Ouroboros. So what now? Pearl was right. The plaster had covered an Ouroboros. I knew it. Another secret passageway. Amazing, Charles. How did you do it? Just another case of the old Stobart magic, I guess, Nico. It, uh... It looks a little dark in there. Are you scared, Charles? Of course not. Just worried about you tripping, that's all. Oh, this is one dark cave. It's the door that worries me, Georges. Oh, I'm sure the door will open again if we give it a minute. No need to panic. Now we panic. I gotta say, Nico, you're pretty calm about this. Traveling with you, Georges? I've got used to this kind of thing. If I panicked every time a door shut behind us, probably forever, well... You're right. What was I thinking? You see if you can get the door open, and I'll go check out the... dark, evil-smelling cave. Fumbling around in the dark wasn't gonna be fun. But heck, I'd spent a lifetime doing it, so what was new?
The thing had branches like a tree. It was cold to the touch and felt like carved rock. It was stone with a recess in it and, ugh, an oily liquid in it. There was some kind of thin twine in the middle of it, too. Hey, Nico, I think I found some light. Whoa. It must be Ganon. Ramon said he disappeared while searching the mountains for the tabula. So this is where he ended up. Dead in a cave. And on closer inspection, I'd even say blown your own brains out dead. Okay, Georges, I get the point. What is this place? Who knows, but look at the Gnostic symbols. You're right. The colors, the trees. But who is she? Well, it looks like the Virgin Mary, but I don't think it is. What do you mean? The red robes and that whole off-the-shoulder look? It must be Mary Magdalene, of course. Marquez told me that the Gnostics revered her. This place, it's some kind of Gnostic shrine. There's got to be something to release that door. Maybe amongst these carvings. But if it was that obvious, don't you think Ganon would have found it? Ganon had certainly been busy before he blew his brains out. I wonder what he'd been up to. It was an old water canteen. The contents had long since been drunk. It was an old flashlight. It looked like it died around the same time as Ganon. Ex luce veritas. Out of light, truth. I'd seen the same words on the fresco at Castel de Sons. Nico! What? Is this what I think it is? It must be the tabula veritas. So Genan did find it. It so small, so innocent looking. Why would Simeon call it evil? Why so many deaths for this? And why go to such lengths to keep it hidden? Unless it is as genuinely dangerous as Simeon claimed. The question now is, what do we do with it? I picked up the old gun. It was too corroded and rusty to ever be fired again. It was a fedora, just like the one in Ganon's trunk back at the castell. The years hadn't been kind to it. It had to be Ganon, in which case the body had been there for decades. There was a bullet hole in the side of his head. Just like us, he'd been trapped. He'd chosen suicide. The photograph was of an ancient clay tablet. Ganon had written on it. Someone, presumably Ganon, had taken the time to translate the inscription. At a glance, the inscription seemed to relate to the exploits of someone called the Sun King. The symbol on the tablets looked similar to the ones etched into the face of the Tabula Veritatis. I prized the map out from under the arm of the corpse. It looked like Ganon had scrawled some kind of last testament onto this map. My friends, I know that you will eventually find me, but by then it will be too late. I have decoded the tabula, and I know our destiny lies in paradise. The key to the power of God is in our hands. I die secure in the knowledge that you will now be able to complete my work. Tell my family that I died doing my duty, that I surrender my life gladly to the cause. In the light of the day, these words will fade, like our souls. But rest assured that when they do, their echoes will guide us to where we will meet once again. I'm not sure, but it looks like crafty old Ganon left a secret message in his testament. When I moved the map close to the flame, something started to change. The writing on the map started to react to the heat. Well, I'll be darned. What is it? 
At a guess, the locations on the map might match up with the ones he's marked on this photograph. If this letter matched the one on Gaiman's translation, this must be the location of the Sun City. If this letter is the same location as the one marked D on Gaiman's translation, this must be Sunset Mountain. If the letter E matches the one on Gaiman's translation, this must be the location of the Young Cities. If the letters match the ones on Gaiman's translation, this must be the Mountain Kingdom. If this letter matched the one on Gaiman's translation, this must be the location of the Three Rivers region. I wondered if Gaiman's notes on the photograph might help me decode the tabula. That was the first row of symbols cracked. It was all starting to make sense. So, these are directions. Begin at Sun City, travel five days east to a river, travel south six days through a desert to the source of four rivers. Hey, Nico, I've cracked it. Fantastic. The Tabula Veritatis, it's a set of directions. Take a look at this map. The inscription says to start here, at Sun City. Ganon hid the location in his map. It then says to travel five days east to a river, then turn south and travel six days through a desert to the source of four rivers. And what is that? I'm not sure, but it must be important, right? Right. Important enough for the Gnostics to try and keep it a secret for thousands of years. And guess what? I think I may have found a way out. You have? Look, while you were busy playing Ancient Scholar, I found this. What did it do? I'm not sure. It didn't open the door. Perhaps we're missing something. Must be. If Ganon died looking for a way out, there has to be more to it than just a hidden button. Then let's keep looking.
The carved figure had once been green. I wondered if it was a representation of Jehovah. Blue paint was peeling from the carved figure. I wondered if it was an image of Lucifer. A group of figures looked up towards the tabula. They were all colored red. I'd seen something like it before. There were ancient scratches on the plinth, as if someone had moved the statue. I'm sure that this is Mary Magdalene. The red robes. It all makes sense. The Madonna would be wearing blue. So, who's the child? Well, according to the Gnostic Gospels, when Mary kissed the lips of Jesus, she, uh... Oh, I see. Yep. So the Gnostics think that the suckling child is... I guess so. The ornate lamp warranted a closer look. The medallion fitted snugly into the socket. Whoa, would you take a look at that? The light from the medallion is illuminating this blue figure. This could be our ticket out of here. If you're right, that explains why Ganon never got out of here. He didn't have the medallion. I gave the statue a push, and it turned anti-clockwise. That sounded like something important happened. I gave the statue another shot. That sounded like something important happened. Is that the door? Thank God. I was getting worried we'd be trapped here, just the two of us forever. There could have been worse ways of being trapped forever. It is the door. Come on, Georges. Nico and I had the tabula veritatis at last. Now all we needed to do was to find Eva and rescue Marquez. And make our getaway. Don't die on me now, old man. Jules, it's Langon. Stay back. For the last time, where is the tabula? You'll never find it. It's here in this chapel, isn't it? Just tell him, Papa. I will tell you nothing. Look at your daughter, senor. My man would be happy to hurt her. I cannot let you raise Lucifer. You will bring chaos to the world. George, we have to do something.
With luck, Langham wouldn't notice that the gun was useless. Hold it there, Langham. Well, if it isn't my least favorite American. Where is the tabula? Even if I did have it, why would I give it to you? Because you don't have a choice. For God's sake, shoot him, George. Yes, go on. Shoot me, why don't you? Don't push me. That gun would never fire. Give me the gun before you hurt yourself. I didn't rate my chances with just a rusty old pistol. Now, do you have the tabula? If I give you the tabula, then you promise you'll let us all go free? I give you my word. No, George, no. So, the tabula veritatis. Actually, I will need to take the girl with me. The old man would just slow us down. No, I'm staying here. My father needs medical help. If he doesn't get it, he will die. Oh, really? <laughs> no! Problem solved. Langham, you'll rot in hell for what you've done. Hell? Quite the opposite, believe me. The world will be a better place, George, once Jehovah has been destroyed. What? Lucifer will set us free. You can't destroy Jehovah. I can. And I will. Bring the girl. But you agreed to let us all go free. She may be of use yet. One of my men will be outside. If they try to follow me, shoot them. It would be my pleasure, boss. Eva. Uh. You must get the tabula back. We don't even know where he's going. All we know is that it's somewhere in the Middle East. Nothing else? There was a note, something about our destiny lies in paradise? And we found a map. It shows the source of four rivers, but that's all we have. Can it be? You know what that means? In Genesis, there is a river. It flows from paradise and divides into four. Where is this place? This paradise? Eden. He's going to Eden. The Garden of Eden? But that's just a Bible story, a myth. No, it's a real place. It's where Jehovah created life, where Lucifer gave Eve knowledge, where the gods are held in balance. And now Langham has the tabula to lead him right to it. Only you can stop him. You must defeat him. But how? Eva... She will know. He'd gone, but I knew he was right. We had to stop Langham and rescue Eva. Marquez was dead. There was a door at the bottom of the steps, but I would never have managed to reach it. The drain pipe entered a small, flat drain cover. Hey, Nico, I've got a plan. Over. Roger, George. What are you thinking? Over. I'm going to place the radio out here. Maybe it'll be enough to distract the guard. Give me a second to set this up, then start talking. Got it. I carefully positioned the radio in the drain.
I'm warning you, I will shoot. The guard was already pretty worked up. The hammer hit the guard on the head with enough force to knock him out. Nico, let's get out of here. That guard won't be causing us any more problems. Uh, those steps must have been slippery. He took a little tumble. Miko, look! There's a cable car ready to go. Quick, before Langham locks down the system. You don't think perhaps we should have waited for the next one? Well, we caught it, didn't we? What's all the fuss? Now, if I can just open this window, I think we'll be fine. Okay, maybe not. Now, don't panic just yet. I, I'll think of something. I couldn't quite reach the handle. It's a little stuck. Just give me a second. Just hurry up! Nico! So, we meet again. I've come for my painting. What painting? La Maledicción. Gesundheit. Don't play games with me. We both know the painting conceals a treasure, Mr. Stobber. You know, even if the painting was yours, I wouldn't give it to you. You're just a common gangster. <laughs> a fine sentiment. But I won't let you cross me again. Again? You stole my ruble. My platinum 12 ruble. Well, that was just an old coin. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of old coin. Wow. A guy could do a lot of redecorating with that. Ah, uh, enough of your American humor. You will tell me where to find the treasure, and you will tell me now. Not gonna happen. And did you really just say, so we meet again? Hello, miss. Could you help me out, please? Sorry, no can do. But while you're down there, maybe you can clear something up for me. What? Something you said when we first met's been playing on my mind. Do I have a choice? Exactly. Exactly what? Choice. I don't follow. You see, I'm a determinist. Goes with this line of work. But what you said in London made me ask one of the big questions. Is there such a thing as free will? Because if there is, then I've made some pretty dodgy choices in me time. So help me out a bit here. So, do you have regrets? No. 
I don't think so. But I am a little worried. This whole free will thing has got me thinking. What do you enjoy in life, Shields? Well, uh, I like footy, a good scrap, and topiary. So you're a football fan, right? Gotta love the beautiful game. So if determinism was valid, why would anyone play? What would be the point of it all? Hmm. Sometimes when we lose, that's just what I think. We have a choice. We always have a choice. Just like you've got a choice right now. Help us or not. I don't know. I'd like to. But the boss... My philosophy class seems to be working. So, you're a determinist? Isn't that just an excuse to let Medovsky boss you around? At least I know who's controlling me actions. Do you? Of course. I do as I choose. So, you chose to leap off that cable car, did you? Yes, because you and Madovsky shot at me. You did choose to shoot at me, didn't you? Well, yes. But I didn't choose to shoot that geezer in the gallery. You never intended to kill Henri? I just wanted to rough him up a little. But the gun went off and the rest is history. Free will didn't come into it. But you'd made a choice not to shoot him. The fact he died was an accident. Hmm. So you think I've got a chance of redemption? If by redemption you mean a spell in jail with them off a good behavior, then yes. I think there is a chance for you. And you know what? No. Enlighten me. I'm getting too old for this crime, Lark. I think I'm having an epiphany. Of course, it might just be indigestion. <laughs> No, nope. it's definitely an epiphany. I think you're right. The only thing that has led me here is me and my actions. I'm going to talk to the boss. He's sure to listen to reason. Boss! Boss! What is it, you imbecile? How many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm about to kill somebody? Remember what we agreed. I am the big man who takes care of the big things. And I am the little man who takes care of the little things. <laughs> exactly. So, haven't you got a little thing you should be doing? Hmm. There is one little thing, now you mention it. Well, don't let me stop you. Get on with it, you big baboon. If you say so, boss. Oh. Oh, dear. There you go. Free will under orders. Now that is what I call a real paradox. George? You took your time back there. Yeah, Madovsky and I had a lot to catch up on. And you and Shears seem to be getting on just fine. So, I figured you'd holler when you were done. Always nice to see old friends. Oh, thank God it's you two. You would not believe what just happened. Try us. Oh dear, the monks aren't gonna like that. We had a little philosophical disagreement on the way up. Nothing the little TLC won't fix. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not really broken, more in uh, a transitional state. It's amazing what a lick of paint can do. What's now, Georges? We find Langham, we stop his crazy plan, we rescue Eva, and you win a Pulitzer. <laughs> when you put it like that, Georges, sounds easy. So, how are we going to catch Langham now? Well, we've got a pretty good idea where he's going. True, Mesopotamia. Or Iraq, as it is now. Not exactly a prime tourist spot. 
Need a lift? I don't think we'll catch Langham in a limo, but thanks. I'm not talking limo, mate. I'm talking Madofsky's full-on, fully-fueled tax and ticket Learjet 60. You think you can get us to Iraq? Wouldn't be the first time, if you know what I mean. I've got the keys, the contacts, and the full drinks cabinet. How about it? It's the least I can do. The last thing I remembered was getting on board Madofsky's jet and accepting a cocktail from Shears. Hello? Anybody there? What happened to the light? Is that better? Whoa! Senor Marquez? Indeed. Hello, George. But you're dead. Does death worry you? You bet. I got a nasty feeling it's coming my way. You have no choice. You cannot allow Langham to destroy Jehovah. Lucifer and Jehovah must rule in harmony, or chaos will prevail. Don't listen to him, George. He is here to lead you astray. He is a Gnostic, a heretic. Lucifer is the devil. He should be defeated. Jehovah must reign supreme. Whoa, hold your horses, Padre. I'm no big fan of the devil, but follow Jehovah, and what do you get? Subservience, repression, mindless conformity. Not my cup of tea, pal. I'm more into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Bacchus is the god for me. Ah, see what you get when you turn from Jehovah. A paint-spattered hedonist. Don't listen to either of them, George. A heretic and a lazy drunk. Hey, I'm not lazy. Nor I a heretic. I were best forger in the business. And I gladly died for my faith, as did thousands of my ancestors. Whoa, 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 fellas, fellas, please. My dream, my rules, okay? That seems to me that what you call greed, he'd call ambition. And your subservience is his order. In just about an hour's time, I'm going up against a guy who intends to destroy God. I need advice. Practical advice. Have a stiff drink and go down fighting. You're a dead man walking anyway. Nonsense. Put your faith in God, and he will be your shield. Don't listen to them, George. They're both wrong. Maintain the harmony. Protect the balance. But how do I... You have the answer in your hands, George. In my hands? Uh, what do you mean? Josh? Josh, wake up. You were dreaming. What? What? Oh, what was all that about? You were dreaming. Something about sex and drugs from the sound of it. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Are we there yet? Well, that looks like the source of four rivers, so the Garden of Eden is right down there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I hope you've had a pleasant flight. The temperature in Eden is a pleasant 30 degrees centigrade. We shall be landing on a flat plain about two kilometers into the desert, which you will find is a pleasant stroll to your destination. Fasten your seatbelt and all that gubbins. Finally, may I take this opportunity of thanking you personally for choosing to fly air shares. We do hope you'll fly again with us soon. Come on, I think we're nearly there. Wait, Charles. I think Shields is having a moment. <sighs> <Ooh. 
raining hellfire. I'm, I'm cream crackered. Just give me a moment. You go on. We'll catch you up. I fed Trevor a little more cookie. Oh, it was the least I could do after what I'd done to the poor little guy. Ah. Guys. There's a small problem. Is it Langon? No, it's worse than that. Come look. Oh, Georges, stop being so overdramatic. Oh, look, a goat! You like goats? Love them. Hey, we could call it Donna. Oh, what a lovely name. Isn't it, princess? Are you hungry, my lovely? Okay, while you get all David Attenborough on us, I'll take a look around. That's a Wolfram truck. Which means Langham can't be far away. Bloomin' lovely, as Mr. Hobbs would say. Hey, Nico, check this out. I don't think that will help us right now. It was a huge natural stone arch. This whole place was amazing. A giant stone head lay on the ground. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. It was an old, gnarled fig tree. It looked like it had been growing here for many years. There you all are. But where's Langham? What have we got here, then? Do you think the boss is coming out? Don't know, and don't care. I was only here to blow a hole in that rock. Job done. Just waiting for me ride home. Let's give him half an hour, Max. This place gives me the willies. Oh, don't be such a wuss. A few old statues. What could possibly go wrong? Like you said, 30 minutes. We need to get past these idiots and stop Langham. Tricky. They've got some tasty looking shooters. Besides, I'm a reformed man. I've given up senseless violence. Miss Collard is leading me out of the darkness and into the promised land. One day at a time. Oh, that's great shoes. Great. Terrific timing. I guess we're going to have to find a way past them. A large statue of a creature with a winged bull's body and a human head. Looked pretty intimidating. The back of the truck was full of sealed boxes and crates. 
A knapsack had been thrown on top. I grabbed the knapsack. It was full of military items. The driver's door was locked. Hey, Sears. Hello, my darlings. What's all this stuff? Uh, explosives mostly. Right little treasure trove. I'm guessing this isn't a giant stick of gum. Dead right, Georgie boy. It's TNT. Don't worry about it, though. It's perfectly safe. As long as you don't pull that timer cord. And if you do, give us a shout first. Is that what I think it is? Careful! Dynamite is fickle, unpredictable and dangerous. Just like her indoors. No gymnastics while you got that stuff in your pocket. If you can't repair something with duct tape, you're not using enough duct tape. The classic badass lighter. I took it. I needed all the help I could get. What on earth is that, Shears? It looks dangerous. Careful! It could be anything. Jelly ignite, plastic, or... <laughs> it could be someone's lunch. Yeah, I think what you got there is a sausage. Local delicacy, I expect. What's that? Fuse wire. Cut a length off, stick it in something that goes bang, light it and do a runner. Sounds simple enough? It is, until you make a mistake. I knew it was a sausage. Shears knew it was a sausage. But one tiny length of fuse wire and... Voila! Dynamite. Nico, a hand, please. You seem to have a bond with these creatures. I hope you're not thinking of harming Donna. Trust me, a cunning six-phase plan is for me. Wholly approved by all the major animal rights organizations. Just keep her still for a second. Why have you attached the sausage to Donna? That's phase one. Now, watch as the others come together. If it's all the same to you, I'll watch from over there. I had a fake piece of dynamite strapped to the goat. Phase one of my plan, complete. Now, I just had to figure out phases two to six. That should do the trick. I casually tossed a fig to the bottom of the path.
With my best throw, I tossed one of the ripe figs. It landed close to the group. None of them spotted it. I had an idea. I wonder just how much that goat liked figs. Hey, goat. Want a fig? Havoc and let slip the goats of war. Oh, hello, Goaty. <laughs> oh. uh, fellas, what's he got round his neck? Looks like. Oh, my God. Scarper! Langham's guards must have been spooked. There was no sign of him. So, in there then? It looks dark. I ain't going in there. Tight spaces give me the heebie-jeebies. Why don't I stay here and make sure the three wise monkeys don't come back? The cave was pitch black, too dark to see a thing. Come here, George. What are you doing? I was just trying to liven things up. With a pocket full of dynamite? I'll be having those explosives, George. But... No. No buts, George. Through the gloom, I could just see stairs leading down. Come on, Nico. We need to find Langham. Wow. This place is extraordinary. You think this is really Eden? Well, if you see any apples, think twice before you eat them. Look. Lucifer. Jehovah. And Langham. He's got Eva. Whatever he's up to. I hope we're in time. Look, the altar. The glowing thing? It's the shape of the tabula. We have to get across there, quick. It was a dried up, dead looking bush. The ancient bridge had collapsed many years ago. Langham had used a ladder to cross, but that ladder was now on the other side. The ladder was tangled in vines. I couldn't reach it from there. A tangled mass of dry old vines hung from the ceiling. The ladder had got caught up in him. The lighter had run out of fuel, but the flint could still make sparks. Charles, what are you doing? I kind of have a plan. Well, I hope it works. I love the smell of Brett in the morning.
You! Don't you ever give up? But you're too late. No one can stop me now. Do something, George! He's crazy! No, not crazy, as you will soon see. What are you gonna do with the tabula? It is the key, the key that will awaken the two gods. Upon my command, Lucifer shall smite Jehovah with his power. Annihilate him! You'll destroy us all! Ha! The ancients who built these statues feared their powers, but soon I shall control them. You can't destroy Jehovah. You'll shatter the balance. You'll plunge the world into chaos. No. Ruled by Lucifer, man will be liberated to realize his greatest ambitions, to realize his full potential. But this isn't the place to discuss these things. Where do you suggest? How about... Eternity? George! Eke homo! Nico, you must stop him. Eva, what do we do? I don't know. But your father said you had the answer. He used to talk about pure light. Your light? What does that mean? I don't know. That's what he said. Pure light, white light, will conquer. Josh! About, I've been thinking about supper. How does a nice barbecue tickle your fancy? I think you'd better have this, don't you? My father gave his life to find it. Now I must spend mine protecting it. How? Where will you go? To Catalonia. I have a house and a chapel to restore. And a new life to build as a Gnostic leader. You know, Nico, this time I really wasn't sure if we were gonna make it. Perhaps we had the gods on our side, or whatever those powers were. Maybe you're right. You know, we make a great team. Um, we could be more than a team. Oh? Uh -huh. Before this all started, Back in Paris? 
I was just about to invite you out to... Oi! Dinner is served. Fantastic. Uh, what's on the menu? Donna kebabs with a spicy fig compote. Wait. Donna as in... Donna? But Nico, I thought you loved goat. Never know which thing's in my hand, which thing's in my hand. 